and Rich Rodriguez for West Virginia. The number three team in the nation has Heisman hopefuls and dreams of a national championship. The battle of West Virginia is on. is electric here in Huntington as West Virginia is here for the first time since 1915. Parachuters, flyovers, and an unofficial state holiday as the thundering herd try to pull off an upset of number three, West Virginia. I'm Pam Ward, joined by Ray Bentley and Rob Sibylcare. We have two head coaches in this game, two of the 18 head coaches who are at their alma maters in Mark Snyder in his third season for Marshall and Rich Rodriguez for West Virginia. And we have Coach Snyder wired for sound. Here we go, babe. Good, Good. Good. Give me a little something. Good. Give me a little something. Yeah. Show them at Glenville. Show them at Glenville. My partner. Good. Very nice out there now. Hey. Yeah. Y'all practice here? Yeah. I got one field. You know? Well, we just, well, we got a grass field. We ain't all the five times. Yet. Is that right? Kids like this stuff better. Rich said Marina's stomach's a little upset. She goes, you know how many times I've puked today? <laughs> <laughs> Let's go, baby. Let's go. You, baby, all day. All day. All day. All day. All day. Mark Snyder in his third year grew up 18 miles from here in Ironton and played for Marshall. And Rich Rodriguez on the other side in his seventh year, also a West Virginia native from Grant Town who played for the Mountaineers. So Pam, both of these coaches know what this rivalry is all about. And Rich Rodriguez, in fact, told us that he does not consider this to be a rivalry yet. This is only the seventh time that they have played. They did play last year in Morgantown. West Virginia won 42 to 10. West Virginia has not lost. The last time they played in Morgan in uh, Huntington, 1915, West Virginia won 92 to 6. And this is known as the Friends of Coal Bowl, sponsored by an organization that uh, obviously represents one of the biggest industries in this state. And uh, you cannot get a ticket to get in here. These West Virginia fans, many of them, bought not only season tickets for this year, but season tickets last year. So they would be assured of season tickets this year and a ticket to this game. Yeah, and if, as you look at the crowd, it's probably, I'm saying, about 30% West Virginia here today. There are a lot of folks in gold and blue as we look at today's menu. We are Marshall Troop of Football Film. We're going to take a look at that and also a look forward as this campus continues to heal from that tragic plane crash. And also we have two Heisman hopefuls and Steve Slayton and Pat White and West Virginia dreams of a national championship. Marshall University, clad in all green, will receive the football first. Ken McAfee about to kick off in a jam-packed Joan C. Edwards Stadium. Over 38,000 people will be packed in here today. That is a record. Yeah, capacity 38,019. I'm thinking they're going to be closer to 40,000 here today with the beautiful weather. It's just a perfect day for a nice rivalry to get going. This town has been buzzing all week, if not longer. As Ken McAfee kicks off, and for the first time in 92 years, Marshall and West Virginia play in Huntington. It is taken by Darius Marshall, a terrific young true freshman, and Marshall breaks free. Darius Marshall has only the kicker to beat. He slows down and is taken down near the 25-yard line by Nate Sowers, but that's a perfect start for the Thundering Herd. This is exactly what the Thundering Herd needed to get the fans into it and get their confidence up coming into this. And the true freshman, Darius Marshall, who Coach Mark Snyder has all kinds of praise for, comes out and starts it early with a big play. Watch this thing open up in the middle. A little wedge there. They take out the first guy, and then Marshall sees that seam and gets into the foot race. He's going to hear it about the, the kicker, McAfee, running him down later on. But I'll tell you what, they'll take that play anytime. Darius Marshall, the true freshman from Milledgeville, Georgia. A 77 opening kickoff return.
return. And the thundering herd in business, first and 10 from the 23. Their quarterback, Bernard Morris, has Kelvin Turner in the backfield. But Morris is going up top, and his first pass is incomplete as we head over now to the governor of West Virginia, Joe Manchin, for the Marshall offensive lineups. Marshall is known for its great quarterbacks like Chad Pennington and Byron Leftwich, but they weren't as mobile as senior quarterback Bernard Morris is. And the offensive line is led by two of Mountain State's finest, in Josh Evans from Fayetteville and Doug Ligurski from Beckley. Ligurski very good, an all-conference USA first teamer last year at center. The governor, Joe Manchin, a West Virginia graduate, but put on that Marshall juice yes, and he did the Marshall lineups. <laughs> Second and 10 now from the 23, first series of the game. The pitch to Marshall, who had the opening kickoff, and you see why they're so excited about him here as he made a seven-yard gain out of nothing. And we're going to head back to the governor for the West Virginia defense. Every politician needs to be up front. And the Mountaineers sure are strong up front, led by defensive lineman Keaton Dykes. And sometimes, as a politician, you have to take the middle of the road. And the middle for the Mountaineers is governed by Reed Williams. And to be a good governor, you have to have a good support staff. Same can be said for the secondary, led by Eric Wicks. Wicks is a terrific player from Pittsburgh. Big East, all first team. And right now, a third and three for the Thundering Herd. Marshall in the backfield, but Morris looking to throw. Now we'll pull it down and run. And he has stopped a couple of yards short of the first down. Johnny Dingle makes the stop. And Dingle has a tattoo, an NFL tattoo on his right hand to remind him where he wants to go and what he wants to do. And he made a big stop there on that third down. And now Marshall's going to have to settle for a field goal after that 77-yard opening kickoff return. They got all the way down to the 23. This is a 32-yard field goal attempt by Anthony Binswanger, a senior junior college transfer from Pleasant Hill, California. Ball spotted on the near hash. And Marshall has taken the lead. Anthony Binswanger good from 32, and it was all set up by Darius Marshall and his 77-yard return of the opening kickoff. So Marshall strikes first. Welcome back. The Thundering Herd breaking on top of West Virginia 3-0. Rob Simulcare is with excited fans. Virginia before, but none bigger than this for Marshall fans. They've had championships here before. One double A championships in 1992 and 1997, but these Marshall fans feel like this might be the biggest game ever here in Huntington as West Virginia visits for the first time since 1915. Meanwhile, for the Mountaineer fans, a lot on the line, including a possible national championship. Back up to you. All right, Rob, and people are thinking national title here for West Virginia in order to do that realistically versus uh, LSU. USC ahead of them in the polls. They pretty much have to run the table. And Marshall would love to score those dreams right here. Oh, wouldn't they? That and would make their season. You know, you look at all those top teams, and I think West Virginia has the easiest schedule. They just got to get through the Big East. <laughs> so with a 3 nothing lead, the kickoff is taken on the six-yard line by Darius Raynard. And Raynaud is able to dance out of a couple of tackles and then falls forward with a 22-yard kick return. Let's go back to the governor of West Virginia, Joe Manchin, with the West Virginia offense. I was an okay quarterback in my day, but our offense couldn't compare to the high-powered Mountaineer offense, led by Heisman candidates Pat White and running back Steve Slayton. Boy, I sure am glad these two aren't running for public office, or I've been in a world of problems. And our offensive line has lost a couple of stars. But new coach Greg Fry will have this unit ready to lead the way for Slayton and company. One of the stars up front, Dan Moses, the center. Right guard Jeremy Sheffield graduated, but they put a couple more in front. They have to block for Steve Slayton, who gets it right away and goes down right away. The Marshall defense made a fired up first play. John Jacobs, a sophomore from Broadway, Virginia, coming in to make the stop. 
Yeah, and so a little veer play that they run, and they run this a lot. And you're going to see Pat White decide to give the ball, and that was actually a pull lead because that defensive end was closing down so hard. Jacobs is playing even though he broke his hand last week. Pat White's first throw is complete to Raynard, and he has stopped a couple yards short of the first down. Here is Governor Joe Manchin with the Marshall defense. Even though I'm a West Virginia grad, I appreciate a good defense. And up front, these guys are going to have their hands full with Steve Slayton. And in the middle, the Herd's going to need a great game from Josh Johnson. And don't forget about the second goal with hometown kid, John Saunders. And also, don't forget about the Marshall crowd. And the Marshall crowd yelling for a stop on third and two. White looking, throws underneath, and that's a loss. Darrell Jolla gets the ball and is dropped for a five-yard loss. That's a three and out for the Marshall defense. Yeah. C.J. Spillman came up from the free safety spot to get in on that play. And this Marshall team is fired up and playing very well right now. And Coach Rodriguez just needs to get his guys settled down. So it's going to be a quick screen out to the left here. And it was read instantly by Marshall. They come up and make the play and they get the people to the football. And right now they're a fired up herd. Running on a motion, the game started with a 77-yard kickoff return that set up a field goal. And then the defense gets stout and West Virginia three and punt. Flag is down before Ken McAfee, who is the place kicker and the punter for the Mountaineers, can get it off. This is a much better start for the Marshall football team. Last week in their opener against Miami, they had four penalties in the first four minutes of the ball game, a total of 12, but they really came out shaky. Much better start for Coach Schneider's football team here today. They lost to Miami last week, 31-3 to in the Orange Bowl, and Coach Snyder told us yesterday that he uh, got chills coaching down there. Yeah, he There's he no foul for 12 players on defense. The substitute got off of the field prior to the snap. Replay fourth down. That is number five, Darius Marshall. He's the one who took the opening kickoff back 77 yards. He is waiting to get back on the field. Emmanuel Spann waiting back around his 33-yard line, and he is waving for the fans to scream. McAfee, who had only one punt last week for six yards, gets a heck of a lot more than six on that one. Spann retreats and goes down near the seven-yard line. A terrific punt by McAfee and great coverage. 54-yard punt, and they lose eight on the return. Mark Snyder now in his third season in charge of his alma mater here at Marshall. Played only one year in 1987, and what a year it was. He led his team in the Southern Conference with 10 interceptions. That is still a record. Marshall was 9-15 and 15 since he has taken over. He has been at Ohio State under Jim Trestle and was with that national championship team with the Buckeyes, and he is uh, trying to fire people up. And he is indeed one of 19 Division I head coaches at their alma maters, along with the other man on the sideline, Rich Rodriguez. First and 10 from the 12, ball handed off to Kelvin Turner. And Turner picks up about three. The Marshall last week in that loss to Miami, Pam, ended up in bad field position for most of the ball game and really had trouble coming out, which is the situation they're in right now. Now they put it on the ground there, but they, they really have struggled in this area of the field. That's something they're looking for improvement in. You mentioned they had the 12 penalties, also threw four interceptions and gave up six sacks. Bernard Morris, a senior from Orlando, who is uh, taking some heat and some criticism around these parts by some Marshall fans, trying to get things going. Little quarterback draw. He's able to get away from the first wave of tacklers, but then Mark Magro is able to uh, get the gap. But it's a four-yard game. Yeah, Bernard Morris is an outstanding running quarterback. They use him a lot on this quarterback draw where they'll spread everything out, empty backfield, let him drop back, and then pick a gap. And that's what he's good at, making people miss and finding those open running lanes. He can throw the ball pretty well, too. More of a down-the-field passer. He struggles on the shorter throws. In fact, two of his screen passes last week were intercepted. So he has 
little trouble with the touch, but he can hum it down the field. And three picks, three picks overall, going 16 for 26 in that loss to Miami. Now on third down goes up, and it's a little too far in front of the receiver. Great job by Courtney Evanson, though. He could not quite bring it in, but there was some pressure up the middle. Yeah, had a little pressure, and he tried to throw it right into that little seam. You're going to see the pressure here, and he's got time in this, but then, bam, the blitz are coming off the edge. Lays a hit on, that's Reed Williams, the middle linebacker, who snuck around the outside and got that pressure. Williams, the defensive player of the week last week for West Virginia, had an outstanding game, nine tackles and an interception. Right now, West Virginia's looking at potentially some very good field position as Anthony Binswanger is in. He also, like McAfee for West Virginia, does the punting and the place kicking, taken by Vaughn Rivers, and Rivers is able to get it into thundering herd territory. Seven-yard return on a 38-yard punt. So Steve Slayton, Pat White coming back on the field in Huntington, but they're trailing Marshall. Okay. Gets around the corner, has it breaks. Pat White. Gone. Steve Slayton and Pat White, certainly the most dynamic duo in college football. There's some arguments there, probably maybe out in Arkansas. But, uh, with you. but these two guys are unbelievable. Speed and more speed. Slayton in the first series, one carry for no gain as. West Virginia was stopped on a three and out, but now they have the ball in Marshall territory at the 46. White, time to throw, has his man wide open over the middle, and Darius Raynaud takes it in for the West Virginia touchdown. And I think Darius Raynaud might be every bit as good as Pat White and Steve Slayton. He is, in fact, Pat White told us Raynaud is the best athlete on this football team. And he gets overshadowed a lot because of the high profile of White and Slayton. But he is an explosive player. Just ran a post route, had man-to-man -man coverage, blew past the defender, and White put it right on the money. And that was a great one play. One drive, one play. But the extra point snap. There's a miscue. Jeremy Cash is the holder. He's unable to get it down. And West Virginia has to just settle for six. But let's go back to that nice post route. And take a look at it here. White's going to look to his right to look that defender off a little bit. But it's just the speed of Raynaud as he just blows past Aaron Johnson. And he just didn't have a chance. And this is what was concerning Steve Dunlop, the defensive coordinator for Marshall. Just the speed and how do you, how do you stop that? There's no way to stop unless you have speed and they don't quite match up, at least with Raynon, Slayton, and White. So Pat White with the touchdown. He threw a couple of touchdown passes last week. West Virginia opened up with a convincing 62 to 24 win over Western Michigan in Morgantown last week. And White, we can do it with his legs, did it with his arm that time. Yeah, he's a little sensitive about being referred to as a running quarterback. And when we spoke with him on the phone earlier this week, that was brought up, and he made it very clear to us that he was a quarterback and no qualifiers needed. And he showed it on that. That was a nice throw. Sat in the pocket, looked things off, and then laid it perfectly into the hands of Raynaud, who was at full speed. Pat White was recruited by several schools who wanted to use him at positions other than quarterback. Came up here with an opportunity to play. And he did say, I am not a running quarterback. I can play in the pocket or get out and make plays. He can do it all because he wants to play at the next level. Yes, he, does. he does not want to be labeled as a running quarterback. Kickoff is a short one. A kick away from Darius Marshall. And they're going to take over Marshall Wolf from around the 30. The Big East has Heisman hopefuls without ever leaving the conference. Uh, Brian Brown, the quarterback of Louisville. Ray Rice, 175 yards on the ground last night. And then Slayton and White right here. Yeah, this is an incredible group, all from the Big East. And Brown right now, nine touchdowns on the year, no interceptions. His efficiency is off the charts, 226 
3.47. So that's going to be a good battle. I wouldn't be surprised if the Heisman winner did come out of this conference the Big East. One of the things with two players being on one team is there's a fear of splitting the vote with Slayton and White. And it will be a battle. So now down 6-3, to three, West Virginia gets the ball. And Kelvin Turner continues to be in the backfield, and he'll only pick up about a yard for the Thundering Herd. Yeah, it's interesting. They list Chubb Small as the starter, but when we spoke to Coach Snyder, he just he, he felt like he was just a guy, really, and he, he wanted to get his younger backs in there and get some opportunities. And the guy he really mentioned was Darius Marshall, and we saw what he could do on that opening kickoff. Taking it 77 yards, which set up a 32-yard field goal. Bernard Morris with five receivers. Morris all by himself in the backfield. With a second and eight. Looks underneath, completes it close to a first down to Courtney Edmondson, sophomore from Titusville, Florida. Got it some speed on Courtney, and they're excited about his future. Actually, it was Darius Passmore, number 88, who made the catch. And Passmore is an exciting player. They were really happy to get him in. He came over from the College of the Sequoias out in California, runs a 4-4-40, a 10-700 meter, and they think that they have upgraded their receivers across the board this year by picking up Passmore and then the development of Edmondson. Lord Moore said nobody's been able to stop Passmore in practice, and West Virginia could not stop him there. It's first down, a little reverse as Passmore looked like he might be trying to throw, but instead he is dropped in the backfield by Scooter Berry. Great pursuit for the redshirt freshman. And the timing was all off on this. The snap comes way too late. Watch how long Bernard Morris had to wait to make that handoff. And that allows the penetration from Barry to come up and make the play. See, that motion back right there should be right at the quarterback when the ball is snapped. That's Milligan, the receiver. And the timing was just off from the beginning on that play. And you see Barry uh, did redshirt last season. Actually, was the scout team player of the year. Both defensive lines in this game rather thinned out by injury. Not a lot of depth, but uh, Barry seems to have a good future in front of him, and that was a nine-yard loss. So now Morris looking to throw plenty of time, but everybody's covered downfield, and he goes down. The quarterbacks for Marshall sacked six times last week at Miami, and now Morris goes down in the arms of Johnny Dingle. And this is max protection from Marshall. They, they keep all these guys up here in to protect, but they don't block anybody. You got three guys standing over here not blocking anybody, and because of the max protection, there's only two receivers down the field. They're not open, and so Morris has nothing to do but tuck it down and try to make something happen. Great coverage down the field, and Dingle just kept working. So now third and 22 after the sack, Morris takes off. He had a lot of ground to cover and instead is taken down after only picking up six. So Marshall did get its first first down of the game on that series, but we'll be looking at another punt. Ivy made the tackle. Yeah, and Ivy was the spy in the defense that time. He sat back, and he, his job is just to not even drop into pass protection or pass defense. He's just waiting for Bernard Morris for the quarterback draw or the scramble, and the spy worked out perfectly. So Morris just one for three through the air with eight yards on the day. As Ben Swanger is in to punt again, Vaughn Rivers retreating, getting it around his 18, and a terrific tackle as Rivers is tripped up near the 25-yard line. Cody Slade, who is a very promising tight end with a nice tackle. So the West Virginia defense starting to flex its muscles, and they're coming back out on offense with a three-point lead. ESPN's College Football, brought to you by Dodge. Live life to the fullest. Dodge, grab life. And E-Trade, it's easy, it's extraordinary. It's E-Trade. Marshall's campus occupying 88 acres in the heart of Huntington, West Virginia, named after John Marshall, Chief Justice of the United States from 1801 to 1835. And yes, he is indeed Marshall. And 
They are hosting West Virginia for the first time since 1950. 92 years. A little bit of a dry spell there. Big time. Marshall has had some great success winning one double-A championships. West Virginia hoping to win a championship this year. Up 6-3 with a touchdown and a missed extra point or a failed to snap on an extra point. Pat White, there's the elusiveness. But a good job by the Marshall defenders to only hold him to a five-yard gain. C.J. Spillman, who's been working on his tackling all season, made the stop. Yeah, and this is the thing that Pat White is able to do, make people miss. You see him, he's, the, the penetration got in the throwing lane, so he brought the ball down and then just went to work. Made a couple of guys miss and then has the power to finish runs as well. Maurice Kitchens also in there to make the stop. Second and five for the Mountaineers. With the super talented super back Steve Slayton getting it. And that hole was closed up in a hurry by Michael Janet, the redshirt freshman from Miami. Yeah, and they're really high on Janet. They think he's one of the young ball players that's really going to blossom into an outstanding player. You know, and they lost their best defender in preseason, Albert McClellan, who was a defensive player of the year in Conference USA last year. And with him out, that gave Janik an opportunity to play this year. Third and two for West Virginia. White rolls out, hits the receiver for the first down as it's Raynaud. Raynaud scoring on a 46-yard touchdown earlier in this game, picks up 19 in the first. Right, and just a quick out route. You see White's going to step towards it. This is this is run-and-shoot football. That's an old run-and-shoot play, and when we talked to Coach Rodriguez, you know, he said that's where his offense really evolved from was the old run-and-shoot, and that's an old run-and-shoot play right there. Just a quick out where the quarterback rolls to it, and it's enough for the first. Took the Mouse Davis offense and uh, to a whole new level. Yeah, the old Tiger Ellison run and shoot, the original. And that pass again completed to Raynaud, and he's not going anywhere. Stop for a minimal gain. As he was well covered. Raynaud is by far the favorite target. Aaron Johnson able to get over there and make the stop. Albert McClellan, the captain, had 11 and a half sacks last year. Conference USA Defensive Player of the Year did uh, blow out his knee during uh, the preseason. We're going to talk with him later on in the game, but what a huge, huge loss for this team. Yeah, I mean, he had 19 and a half tackles for loss last year, was a dominant player, and had a non-contact injury in fall camp, and he hadn't walked off the field. They didn't think it was that big of a deal, and sure enough, tore his ACL. Ryan Schmidt is in there to block for Pat White. And White has stopped a couple of yards short of the first down by John Saunders. You know, and Pat Mike White might tell you, I'm not a running quarterback, but he is a quarterback who can run. Yeah, and, that's for sure. Uh, we can put it that way and maybe not offend anybody. But he is such a huge weapon in this offense because they, when they spread everybody out and they put him in the backfield with just one back. And as Steve Dunlop, the defensive coordinator for Marshall, told us, that's high backs because he is such an effective runner. And then they have all the blockers in there because you have to spread out to cover receivers. And it gives the offense a huge advantage timeout. to have his running West ability. Virginia, first. And with the third and three, the timeout is taken. Patrick White over 20, 200 rushing yards. Best ever for any quarterback in the Big East. Welcome back. West Virginia leading Marshall 6-3 to three here in the first quarter. Three minutes left to go. And West Virginia is taking the timeout. Third and three from the 39. And Pat White comes back to lead the offense from an empty backfield. He has five receivers. And he finds his man, but it's off the hands of his intended receiver, Nate Sowers, who should have brought that one in. Yeah, he should have. That's a nice throw from Pat White. But Steve Slayton so far in 10 plays has only had two touches of the ball. So they're kind of using him as a decoy so far here early on. And I think that's in part because Marshall is trying to take him away and it's leaving other people open. 
He scored on a 50-yard screen pass for a touchdown last week against Western Michigan. It was a gorgeous play by Slayton, but he's not been involved in the offense much as that line drive punt is fielded around the 12-yard line, a 27-yard punt from McAfee, and Span grabs it, and Marshall will take over from around the 12. Later on tonight, ESPN brings you two great college football matchups. Six Eastern time, Jimmy Clausen hopes to turn around Notre Dame as they travel to Happy Valley to play Penn State. Then at 9.15, number nine, Virginia Tech takes on LSU. For more information, log on to ESPN.com. And Notre Dame did not look good at all, losing to Georgia Tech. And now they go into Beaver Stadium. Ouch. And the, the people are going to be only so patient with Charlie Weiss when they come out of this thing 0-2, which you know, they haven't lost yet. But boy, it doesn't look good. As, Joe Paterno's got a good football team down there. Very good team, so check that out tonight on ESPN. A chance to see Notre Dame, and that's a great run and catch as Sean Lazen makes a 28-yard reception. Good throw that time by Morris. Yeah, and Marshall had only been averaging one yard on first down. This will pump that average up. And this is what Morris does the best as far as I'm concerned. Throwing the ball down the field. He's very accurate. He's got the strong arm. Watch him just put this one in. Bam, right there in between the safeties, right on the money. And if he can be effective down the field, and they can run the ball a little bit, they, they got a chance out here. He's on the senior from Virginia Beach with the catch. Darius Marshall now in the backfield and gets the handoff. And Marshall, who started this game off with a 77-yard kickoff return, gets three yards on that carry. West Virginia is very stout against the run and have been. They were very strong last year against the run. But the pass is where they've struggled. And there's a couple reasons for that. You know, they get ahead of teams, and people will throw the ball more often on them. And, and when you're ahead, you play a little looser on defense. But that even being said, I still think there's opportunity to throw the football down the field for that man, Bernie Morris, or Bernard Morris. They were 109th in the country out of 119 teams last year in pass defense. Jeff Castillo is their defensive coordinator, says they will improve this year. Pass is completed to Lazon again, and he is able to pick up three more yards. Marshall and West Virginia, both here in the Mountain State, two biggest universities, and there is a comparison as West Virginia actually is the younger school, the bigger school, and playing football just a little bit longer, but Huntington has not been in Division 1A very long. Now since 1997 when they moved into the MAC conference and dominated that one, five MAC titles in their eight years, and then decided to move on to the Conference USA, and they haven't had as much luck in that conference. Morris with plenty of time. And that one is thrown incomplete, looking for an uh, interference flag. But Cody Slate, the very talented tight end, will not get it. Slate is, a, is really a terrific talent for this team. Yeah, and he was just isolated over there on Antonio Lewis and just ran the out route. And he had a little separation. I think Morris missed him just by a hair. But Slate, their leading receiver last year as a true freshman, and he's a guy in this offense that they try to find ways to get the ball to, and that was one of them there, just get him outside, singled up, and let him run an out route. In fact, the first freshman to lead Marshall in catches, it's Randy Moss in 1996. Cody Slate, but unable to bring that one in. So Benz Warner is coming once again, and that one falls short, and will dribble dead around the 22. Only a 35-yard punt. So these two teams didn't play for over 60 years. How did this all get hooked up? Why are they playing again? Here's Rob Simulcare. Well, and we've talked about how long this game has been coming. Governor Joe Manchin of West Virginia started trying to put this together as early as 1992, and he was still in the state Senate. He's a West Virginia grad that grew up here in Huntington. And when he became governor, he made this a priority, got the two presidents of the two schools together, and got them to agree to a seven-game series. This is the second one. At least two of them will be here in, in Huntington, which is a huge deal for the folks at Marshall. And the winner of two of the first three games gets, gets to host the seventh game. And that means West Virginia, if they win it, will be assured of that. And Steve Slayton has been bottled up, continues to be bottled up, no gain. John Jacobs, then playing with a broken hand, didn't make the stop. 
You see he's yeah. got a big old club on that left hand. Yeah, Jacobs just hustling from the back side, ran that thing down, and good contain on the front side, forcing forcing the cutback. So right now the Marshall defensive game plan is coming together pretty good, except for that one long ball to Renan. Well, Jacobs broke a ball on his thumb, so he's a one-arm tackler today, and has done a good job. Pat White has Slayton out in the flat, finds him. And Slayton, again, finds a lot of green jerseys, including number 19, John Saunders, only a two-yard game. And I think West Virginia has to start throwing the football down the field a little bit more. That's when they've had success. Sowers dropped the one, but Renard caught the, the post route. And Marshall is packing a lot of guys in the box and around the line of scrimmage, and they're daring them to throw it deep. They're not going to get beat on broken tackles and, and shorter designed plays, but they are susceptible to the longer ball. Third and seven. We'll see if a play will be, uh, it looks like Pat White is going to let the clock expire. No, actually snapped it right before the quarter came to a close, and the pass is incomplete, looking for Slayton. I thought he was just going to let the clock run down. Maybe he wanted Marshall to feel the same way. But instead, the Marshall defense has come up big against one of the best running tandems in the country. West Virginia up three off the line. Marshall and West Virginia battling. Each team had only two first downs apiece in the first quarter. Marshall trailing West Virginia 6-3, and uh, Slayton and White, not what you'd expect from these Heisman hopefuls. No, and they're a little bit, I don't know, off kilter right now, maybe would be the way to put it, but they are an explosive duo, so it's it's just a matter of getting touches, and eventually they're going to bust a big one. You can count on that. Slayton, four touches for a grand total of five yards. Ken McAfee, a little line drive punt. And that one rolls dead around the 37-yard line. McAfee boomed a 55-yarder earlier in this game. That one only traveled 35. We're in Huntington, West Virginia, which is south of Morgantown, West Virginia, where Pat White and the rest of the West Virginia Mountaineers call home. And here's our Google Digital Globe map look. And about 210 miles between the two schools. A little over three hours of driving time, depending on if you want to go to speed limit. I-79 South to I-64 West. First time that West Virginia has made this trip since 1915. A much anticipated trip, especially by the Marshall fans. Hand off to Darius Marshall, and he'll only get about three yards on that as uh, we head down to Rob Simulcare. He's got a very special guest. All right, thank you very much. Here with West Virginia Governor Joe Manchin. And, Governor, this is something that your people, people in your state have waited for for quite a long time. What did it take to make it happen? Well, basically, the 12th game that was added to the schedule, the NCAA, opened the door for everything to happen because it was supposed to be a financial game. It's exactly that as you look around. Never been a venue like this here before. I think it's going to be great for our state of West Virginia, but great for both schools. Now, you're a graduate of West Virginia. You played football there, but you grew up here around Marshall. So. No, no, no. I, still, I grew up up north. I'm, I'm, I'm a north central boy, Farmington High School, little coal mining town. So we're anxious. And this is great. And the friends of coal and what coal does for this nation. And we got to, you know, it's just everything good about our state. Okay, and you've got the neutral tie going as well. That tie, that tie does it all, doesn't it? <laughs> Thank you very much. Enjoy the day. All right, hand back up to you. Did he get a bowl of soup with that tie? Yeah, that's a, that's a heck of a colorful tie. You wonder, how do you find a tie with green, blue, gold? And uh, he did it. The governor found it. I Joe might, Manchin. Now. I might have a few of those in my closet somewhere. <laughs> He's got, uh, he's got to stay here, too, because people down here vote, too, obviously. That's right. you got to keep them all happy. And he did play quarterback for West Virginia. Third and eight, and a timeout is taken by Bernard Morris, the senior quarterback, two-time captain. Now, there are not a lot of uh, players who go to the uh, top of Division 1A from this state. And you see West Virginia with 23 in-staters. Marshall has 20. 
And uh, eight Morgantowners going to West Virginia and three players from Huntington going to Marshall. And both head coaches, again, only 19 head coaches in Division 1A are coaching their alma maters. And we have two of them right here. Yeah, and it's, it's uh, really a great game for the state of West Virginia. And you saw all the 43 kids from this state participating uh, with these football teams, both coaches at their alma mater. I mean, you couldn't even draw it up any better than the situation that we have here today. And we got ourselves a football game. Most people would have thought West Virginia would come out here and just run up and down the field. But Marshall has been playing outstanding defense early on, and they were able to take advantage of that big play on the kickoff return to get their three points. So we got us a ball game. Harris Marshall, 77 yards with the opening kick, set up a field goal, and now after the timeout, third and eight from the 39 for the thundering herd. Morris sidesteps from pressure and then throws low. It is off the hands and incomplete as he was looking for the tight end Cody Slate. So Morris on the move, unable to pinpoint that pass. Yeah, and the key is protection for Morris. And he had to step up in the pocket. Dingle actually got a swat on him and hit him and kind of forced that throw to be hurried. And that, that was a problem for Marshall last week, protecting the quarterback. Gave up six sacks, and the, the way they explained it was, hey, they were going against Miami, which had an outstanding front four, and they do. But they've got some youngsters on the offensive line. So those kids are going to get better. Josh Evans, a redshirt freshman there, and Daniel Baldridge, a sophomore, getting their first playing time. So they, they'll, they'll improve, but right now they're struggling. And that is a booming punt. Vaughn Rivers retreats inside his 10 and then breaks free. An ankle tackle saves perhaps a huge return, a 54-yard punt by Benzwanger and a 17-yard return. Will Albin with a terrific special teams tackle for Marshall. A couple of Heisman hopefuls right here on the field and Pat White and Steve Slatemore and more on them when we come back. This telecast is being broadcast in high definition, available on ESPN2 HD, presented by Pioneer Kuro HD TV. Crystal clear, big time rivalry between Marshall and West Virginia. The number three team in the country, West Virginia, only up 6-3 here in the second quarter. And Pat White, one of their Heisman Trophy candidates, hangs on to it. And there's the explosiveness you can expect from White. Finally breaking free on a run this afternoon. Gets 25 all the way up to midfield. Yeah, and it, this is a, the veer that we showed earlier. And go ahead and run this, fellas. And this is the guy right here on this end. That's who he's reading. See, the end closed down. And when the end closes down, the quarterback will pull the football and make magic happen. And that's what Matt White did. And Pat White has more rushing yards than any quarterback in the history of the Big East. I mean, in this game, with over 2,200 in his career. And on first down, he zings it out to Raynaud, and that is a terrific tackle as he was stopped in his tracks by Aaron Johnson, the junior transfer from San Francisco, junior college transfer. And Johnson came up, made a nice open field tackle, but the Marshall defenders are playing close to the line right now, and they are not going to let West Virginia run that quick screen game. They're daring them to throw the ball down the field, and I'm waiting for Coach Rodriguez to pull the trigger on that because that's where they've had their success, and that's what Marshall is giving them in terms of their alignment and their schemes on defense. And look at this. Steve Slayton is now split wide to the right on second and 12. White rolls that way, keeps it all the way, and Pat White picks up six for the Mountaineers, but we expected more from White and Slayton in this game. Yeah, and they've had their troubles early on, and credit the Marshall defense and Steve Dunlap, the defensive coordinator for the scheme that he's put together, and they're tackling very well. Last year when these two teams met in West Virginia, won 42 to 10, Marshall missed 30 tackles in that ball game. So far today, they've only missed three. They've done a pretty good job against one of the most explosive pair of runners in college football. Now third and six. Slayton standing to the left of Pat White. He'll get it on the screen. Green jerseys converge, and he loses yards. 
Slayton drops for a four-yard loss. J.J. Johnson coming up to make the stop, and they continue to not go downfield. Yeah, and that's going to be a problem for them because right now Marshall is taking that away, and they're tackling well in the open field. They're being very aggressive. They're coming up and on things, and they're, they're just daring them to throw the ball down the field. It's man-to-man -man coverage across the board. They don't have a, a deep safety in the middle, and... West Virginia needs to start taking advantage of that, or they're going to have problems moving the football. Rich Rodriguez acting as his own offensive coordinator, along with Calvin McGee. He mostly works with the running backs, and uh, they're going to have to draw up something else. McAfee with another hanging punt, fielded by Emmanuel Spann, and he will field it at the six. Coming back, we'll check out the movie and the true story of the rebirth of the football program and university. We are Marshall. September the 18th, Matthew McConaughey, Matthew Fox in that, and I know uh, you got to see it for the first time there, big guy, and you were misty eye. Yeah, misty eye ain't, ain't quite the way to put it. I had the faucets, both of them running there. It broke me down about four or five times, because I'm a big emotional guy anyway, but, and then you have the, the family and football and all those things together and a sad story. It was an emotional deal, I'll tell you. Darius Marshall gets a first down 12 yards as they were backed up inside their 10 again. Clinton Andrews with the stop. November 14, 1970. They will never forget that date here in Huntington. That is when the plane went down. 75 members of the football team, uh, support staff, perished in that crash. One win at home against Xavier the next year with Jack Langell as their head coach. And the first winning season came in 84, and oh, what great things they did, winning two national championships in one double A. From ashes to glory. And they love their football team here. Blitz, Marshall runs away from it. Darius Marshall gets another first down, follows up a 12-yard run with the... And if they can get the, get the ground game going, this Marshall football team can get... That's just a great cut. Darius Marshall, he was supposed to go to the play side, to the right side, but he saw the opening and got it back the other way. And we talked to Larry Keck, the offensive coordinator for Marshall. He talked about the balance and the vision that you need at running back, and he thought those were two qualities that Darius Marshall had in abundance. And look at the rushing yards, dead even. Who'd have thunk it? West Virginia with their incredible running attack. But Steve Slayton and company have been shut down. Marshall will go to him for another time, and he'll pick up about one. Darius Marshall, some of the guys, because he's a true freshman, have been calling him the future. But Bernard Morris's quarterback says he's the now. Yeah, he is the now. And he, he's the now that they need because Ahmad Bradshaw, who was their leading rusher from last year, had a year of eligibility remaining and decided to enter the NFL draft and ended up a seventh-round pick and made the New York Giants football squad. But... They had a huge hole to fill there, and nobody to fill it except for that true freshman, Marshall. And he has done it quite well. Second and nine now for the Thundering Herd, trailing West Virginia by three. Morris looking to pass, finds his man a couple of yards short of the first down as he is able to conclude it to Marcus Fitzgerald, who is the younger brother of Larry Fitzgerald, of course, from now starring in the National Football League after a great career at Pitt. Ryan Mundy made the stop. Mundy is a transfer from Michigan, but there is Marcus, and his playing time has diminished. He caught a lot of balls earlier in his career, 12 last year as a junior, now a spot player as, as after being a former starter. All right, they picked up Passmore, and Edmondson developed, and 
So they're pretty happy with the way they're receiving tour looks. They got Milligan, the redshirt freshman, who's a good, nice player as well. So now third and two for the herd. Morris pitches it. Marshall picks it up off the bounce and will lose a couple of yards. The ball is loose again. Antonio Lewis closing in on the ball, but Marshall does not cough it up. That was dangerous. They almost gave it up on their side of the field. Yeah, Darius Marshall actually, when he catches this pitch, thinks he's playing basketball. He's going to dribble it one time, but knocks it down on the ground. That was a heck of a play, but he took a nice shot from Lewis to knock the ball out later on. Bam, right there, the big hit. That was actually uh, Quentin Andrews who made the big hit. Lewis had a hold of him by the legs. So they dodge some trouble there by not fumbling it away, but another punt. Anthony Binswanger pressed into duty because of two punters who were hurt in the preseason. Normally their place kicker, that's a beauty. Good hang time, fair catch, signal for and taken by Vaughn Rivers on the 43-yard punt. Pat White and Steve Slayton, like lightning in a bottle. They haven't broken loose yet. Perhaps they will on this series. ESPN's College Football, brought to you by Mazda, always the soul of a sports car. And ESPN Game Plan, see the most college football every Saturday. To order, call your pay-per-view provider. ESPN Game Plan lives here. Marshall classroom, that's one of the journalism classes here in Huntington. And even though they're earnest young journalism students, they have those Marshall t-shirts. We welcome in now Jack Langell, the former coach of Marshall University, who took this team over in 1971. First off, Jack, uh, thanks for joining us. This has uh, been a heck of a game so far. It sure has. I'm very proud of both teams. It's a great game for West Virginia. It brings the teams together. Uh, for state pride and it gives somebody the chewing rights. Yeah, right. And Jack, when you took over this job here, what was what was your motivation? What were you thinking at that time? Well, I had watched carefully when they offered the job to a Penn State coach, and of course he turned it down, and then they offered it to a Georgia Tech coach. He came and stayed two days and, and left for personal reasons. And then uh, I thought I could help the team, so I applied, took the job, and uh, you know, it's, uh, there's an old Chinese proverb that if you're ever given something of value, which I was a head football coach at a college at 29 years old, and I thought I could give something back to Marshall in football, and so that's why I took the job. And, of course, you took over the year after uh, the tragic plane crash that basically wiped out the entire football team. What did you think about uh, Matthew McConaughey and the way, way he portrayed you, and uh, would you say it was an accurate portrayal? Well, I think Warner Brothers did a good job of telling the, the whole story, the Marshall story, and Matthew did a good job of uh, bringing the movie together you know one night we were on the set and walking back and he said you know jack he said uh, uh, i read all your material looked at all your playbook and everything and he said i internalized it as an actor and he said then i didn't try to mimic you so i, I tried to play the role i said i'm glad you told me that man because i was never that animated on the sidelines <laughs> and of course he laughed but i thought he did a brilliant job in the movie and what, and jack taking over in that those circumstances had to be tough what was the biggest challenge that you faced well, I think that the biggest challenge was to pull. When I got there, I thought I was rebuilding the football team, and I came quickly to find out there were 24 boosters on that plane, four doctors and their wives, state senators, city councilmen, uh, leaders, dean of admissions, uh, director of athletics, 70 children without one parent and 18 without two parents. And I found out that there was a whole community that was uh, uh, devastated with this crash, and we had a whole a town behind us is supporting us in the big green and the community was just absolutely fabulous in the rebuilding. All we did was lay the foundation. Bobby Pruitt took it to its fruition and uh, had the winningest program in Division 1A 20 years later. Jack, in the movie, uh, you switched to the Veer and you went up to get your information from Bobby Bowden and I know that was a big help for you. Bobby Bowden was the old, I, we couldn't run our offense. We were running a power offense and I saw Bobby was running the Houston Veer concept office often so I called Bobby and Bobby graciously invited our whole staff up there we spent three days with them they and uh, Frank uh, Signetti taught us the offense went down three days later was learning the offense as we put it in Bobby Bowden is not only a great coach he's a great human being and has, uh, has been close with our family all these years but he's a wonderful coach but he's a better human being 
Jack Thorpe. Thank you so much for joining us, and uh, we'll let you go back and enjoy the rest of this game. Marshall's in good field position. Jack Lingo, thanks again. Thank you. Appreciate it. The head coach of this Marshall team in 1971 after the terrible plane crash and portrayed so well in that film. We are Marshall and uh, Matthews the one on the right. We just talked to the guy on the left. And it was a heck of a film. Uh, bring your tissues if you're going to see it or buy it. Or it's coming out a week from Tuesday. And Marshall fans had a lot to cheer about in that last series. And there is the uh, We Are Marshall, the tribute. The Memorial Student Center fountain dedicated in November of 72 to the memory of the crash victims. And the water stops flowing every November 14th, which was the date of that terrible tragedy. But out of the ashes has come a great football program. Morris into the end zone. And it is caught for the touchdown. Darius Passmore with the catch. And Marshall leads this game. take over and Morris did so buying the extra time and pass more with the speed and the reaction running deep and then the perfect throw and Marshall throws a dagger into the heart of West Virginia here in the second quarter. Coach Jack Langell made it a good luck charm when we were talking to him. Marshall had a great defensive stop and then Anthony Binswanger with the extra point. 38-yard touchdown to Passmore and the Thundering Herd lead. A great protection that time as Morris watches. Nobody's really getting near him. Nobody close to him. He's got the time, so now he's just going to buy more time. Moving outside, waves his receiver Passmore down the field and just drops it in perfectly right over the top of Vaughn Rivers. And Passmore, he's got the speed. He shows he runs away from Rivers there. And Rivers never got his head turned around to find the football. And that was the key to that play. And great ad lib there by Morris and Passmore. And they are excited. Bernard Morris with his first touchdown pass of this season. And what a big one it was. He says nobody's been able to stop Passmore in scrimmages or practice. And certainly not on the field on that play. Marshall 10, West Virginia 6. Passmore had a similar grab last week against Miami where he went up and caught one with defenders all around him. So he's a guy that can go up, use that big body, and make plays. And a nice throw from Morris. And good composure standing back there with the time, directing traffic, and then dropping a dime. Does throw so much better when he goes deep. That was a perfect throw, a terrific catch by Passmore. These fans, there's over 40,000 fans in the stadium that officially seats 38,000. So they got 2,000 crammed in somewhere. Raynaud with the kickoff return. And he is taken down near the 33-yard line as we get an update. Our first visit with Stan Burrett. All right, Pam, three games to choose from on the ABC ESPN family of networks. It's Nebraska and Wake Forest over on ESPN. No score there, but the Huskers trying to get into the end zone. And also on ABC, it's Miami and Oklahoma. Miami coming off its win over Marshall last week. No score with the Sooners right now in the first quarter. Pam, back to you. Thank you, Stan, but I don't know why anybody would want to turn this game off. I mean, we got a heck of a game, an upset ruling Marshall, who last year was only 5-7, and seven, leading unbeaten, obviously, at 1-0 West Virginia, number third in the country, and nothing doing. Steve Slayton struggles for two. Yeah, Steve Slayton, that's his fifth carry of the game, and he's got one yard. And if you were to tell me that was going to happen here today, I'd have laughed at you. Watching him on, on film, preparing for this, he, he was just nothing short of amazing. But he's the kind of guy who will get one yard, two yards, and then bam, 55 to the house. So stay tuned. He'll, he'll break one yet. And he's a quick hitter at 109 yards and three touchdowns on 16 carries last week against Western Michigan. A reverse. 
That does not work. Reynard, as a flag comes in, at least was able to break free and pick up a couple of yards less of a loss. But that was snuffed out well. And that Marshall defense is clued in right now. They, they, this is going to be backed up, a, I believe, a clipping call against West Virginia. But the Marshall defense is clued in. They, they are on top of everything that West Virginia is trying, except for the long pass. That, that's where West Virginia has had success. Illegal block in the back. Number 62 of the offense. Penalty is declined. Third down. And, I, and they have to go back to that, Pam. I mean, Mar that's the thing that Marshall is giving them right now. They're, they've got seven in the box, and they're playing man-to-man -man out on the perimeter, and West Virginia has not taken advantage of it yet. Except for the one time. That's right. In the first quarter, Pat White hit Darius Raynard on a 46-yard touchdown pass. The one play of that one drive. The point after was no good. Made it 6-3, but now it's 10-6. Heard. White over the middle, and that is incomplete. Steve Slayton was locked up with Josh Johnson. No flags. And another punt is forthcoming. And the Marshall defense continues to dominate. And there's some head scratching going on over on that sideline in West Virginia right now, looking for something to hang a hat on because that offense is looking like they're a little dazed and confused. Seven possessions. This will be the sixth punt. Ken McAfee much busier than he had anticipated. He only had to punt once last week in their win against Western Michigan. Kicks that one away from Spawn, and it's marked at the 30. The top 25 greatest players in college football were voted on by a blue ribbon panel of former coaches, former players, and media members. And we're going to reveal 25 through number one on the course of the season, announcing the greatest player in college football in the last week of this regular season. Five greatest players in college football history, presented by IBM, coming in two weeks. IBM, getting it done. So after the Pat McAfee punt, carried by Darius Marshall. And Marshall picks up about a yard. And this is the kind of game that Mark Snyder wanted to get involved in, where it's more of a defensive struggle, and he's trying to work for field position. He wants to get the running game going a little bit, whether it be with his running back Marshall or his quarterback Morris. But this is his kind of game right now. A defensive struggle, a little sloppy, not a track meet. That's not what he wanted to see. Marshall trying to get on the board one more time. About three and a half minutes left to go as Morris retreats and then throws it away as there was some good coverage downfield. He tried to throw a screen to Marshall his back, and, and West Virginia sniffed that one out. They, they were all over the screen, and he had to throw it away. And the screen game has been problematic for this Marshall football team. They ran five screens last week against Miami completed one for two yards and had two interceptions so not so much very very disheartening when you can throw a couple of interceptions on screens yeah. one of them went off the hands of a running back yeah hit chubb small and bounced right in the hands of a linebacker but a whole different day here for marshall up 10-6 and now facing a third and nine kelvin turner now in the backfield next to morris Morris with time to throw, gets Cody Slate, the tight end for the first down. First time Slate's been able to bring one in, get the 13 yards. He's had what a throw from Bernard Morris. So that's the out route. Hitting Slate, he throws it before he breaks. Catch it, boom, boom, let it go. Hit him right there, right in the face mask. I mean, that, that's a well-executed route. Very hard to defend. And you can put the ball on the money on an out route. More often than not, you're going to make that catch. Slate right now listed at 6'4", 225. He's just a sophomore. He's going to grow into that body and 
And uh, they really anticipate great things. Not that he wasn't great last year with 43 catches and six touchdowns. His 13-yard catch gives him a first down. Morris to Slate once again, but that one is just a little too strong off his left hand. Yeah, nice coverage over there. The underneath coverage actually dropped and forced Morris to throw it up over the top. Morris so far six for 12 for 95 yards. As you take a look at Slate, he's as good as uh, his coach Mark Snyder says he has seen at that position as a great motor can go all day. And again, he is uh, just a puppy as a sophomore. Played last year as a true freshman and was a freshman All-American. Second and ten for the herd. Turner now in motion, goes out in the pattern, but Morris goes the other way and it's thrown low and incomplete to Emmanuel Span. So again, Morris on those short passes just uh, doesn't have the uh, accuracy. And a nice play on that one by Eric Wicks getting up there into the throwing lane and forcing Morris to bring it back down and then by the time he reloaded didn't have a good grip on the football and threw it down low. I don't know if Stan would have wanted to catch that one anyway because it was somebody right in his face. So now 315 left to go in the first half. Number three West Virginia down by four and a third and ten Turner in the backfield. West Virginia brings some blitzers as Morris completes it and breaking free once again is Darius Passmore. Passmore who has caught a touchdown pass got that first down on his own. Yeah he did because this is just a, a quick little hitch route and what you want your guy to do is he blitz the corner off of it so it's hot so he knows the ball's coming to him right away. But a couple of guys missed tackles over there. Lewis, the corner, missed him. And then Reed Williams, the linebacker, coming in there, misses him as well. And that's just Darius Passmore shaking and baking and making plays. Passmore with a big third down catch. He has three Time catches out. for 68, 62 yards and a touchdown as a timeout is taken by Marshall. They have one timeout. Remaining. Last week there was an incredible game in Ann Arbor. Appalachian State went into the big house and pulled what is probably the biggest upset in college football history, beating number five Michigan. A 26 or 24 yard field goal gave him the lead, and then Corey Lynn with another blocked field goal. Lynch put Appalachian State up for good. Jerry Moore was the head coach, and uh, Ryan Mundy played for Michigan, graduated from Michigan, and in a rule that has since been uh, grandfathered out, Mundy has one year left of eligibility, came here to play at West Virginia, and he had to hear about that all week. Yeah, well, he just didn't want to play against Appalachian State, so he transferred. <laughs> <laughs> and and App State with that terrific win as we go down the sidelines of Rob Simico. And Pam, speaking of that Appalachian State win, we asked Coach Rich Rodriguez whether that was going to be motivation for his West Virginia team. He said they didn't need the motivation because if they lost this game here at Marshall, they'd always be remembered as the West Virginia team that was the first to lose to Marshall. So he didn't use it, but uh, some people on this sideline might be thinking about it a bit right now. I think a lot of people on the Marshall sideline have been thinking about it as Appalachian State, the two-time defending national National champions in the championship subdivision, formerly known as 1AA. The easier way to say it. They, uh, they were terrific. And uh, they just pulled off the great upset. Now Marshall's trying to do it to West Virginia as Morris goes down. Loses a couple. We'll get an update now from Stan Burrell. All right, Pam, you mentioned the championship subdivision. Pittsburgh's opponent today from the championship, sub, championship subdivision. It's Grambling. And the Panthers out to the early lead. LaShawn McCoy with a touchdown run in Pittsburgh with a 7-0 lead right now at home. All right, Stan also would agree we should go to 1AA instead of championship subdivision, especially when you have to do a quick hit update like Stan just did. 1AA uh, rolls off the tongue a little better. <laughs> I'm sure that people understand it. Marshall with the 10-6 lead, second and 12. Morris 
Time to throw, and then the coverage downfield is too good. He breaks free and is tackled down at the 35 of West Virginia. He picked up seven on that play. And Morris has great escapability as well. We talk so much about Pat White, but Morris can do it too. And this is just outstanding coverage down the field. He's got nowhere to go with the football. Everything is locked up, but he does have the presence to go down and tuck that ball away and make some people miss and get positive yardage and he turns what could be a negative play into a good football play. In fact he was the second leading runner on the team last year next to Ahmad Bradshaw who had over 1500 yards. So a very capable runner. Ninth play of the drive. Coming up longest drive of either team. Morris able to pick it up off the turf and complete it. E.J. Wynn gathers it in, but Moore showed a lot of poise on that. You bet he did, because that snap was low from Ligurski, and he stayed with it, picked it up like it was no big deal, and then popped it in over the middle. Look at that, just ball laying on the ground, and there was a, a pop after the catch as well, but Wynn was able to hang out of that football and move the chains. Wynn, the junior from Washington, D.C., First and ten inside a minute. Morris high but brought in by Chubb Small. And Small picks up a couple as we go back to Stan Burrell. All right, coming up at the half, Jesse Palmer will join me. We've got early highlights from Miami and Oklahoma. Key game there in Norman this afternoon. Plus, how will Michigan respond after that loss to Appalachian State last week? They get ready for Oregon at the Big House. Jesse will share his thoughts on that. And the game day crew will join us for a preview of tonight's big game between Virginia Tech and LSU. That's all coming up at the half, Pam. Thank you, Stan. Nothing like a night game in Baton Rouge. Cody Slate almost has his head taken off. But he makes the catch anyway. Clock stop with 21 seconds left to go in the half. Marshall does have one timeout left. And this is excellent execution of the two-minute drill. Perfectly thrown ball. Got there just before Lewis did. Slate's able to bring it in and get the ball downfield out of bounds and stop the clock. And then he spikes it into the ground. 20 seconds left to go in the first half. Marshall leading number three, West Virginia, 10 to six. Over 30,000 people are crammed into the stadium. And the Marshall folks are making a lot of noise. The West Virginia folks in stunned silence right about now. Yeah, there's a lot of people in yellow sitting down wondering what's happening. And this is a great opportunity for Marshall to take a couple shots into the end zone with 20 seconds left. You're in field goal position. I say take some shots and try and throw the big hammer. And Morris keeps it, gets it right to the middle of the field to set up a field goal. And here's some of the boos coming down. They agreed with you, Ray Begley, that they should have taken a couple of shots first. Yeah, you know, I know they only had one timeout left. So you want to go ahead and make sure you do get the points. But you got 20 seconds. You got them on their heels. My goodness, take a couple shots in the end zone and blow this thing open. But Mark Snyder decided to go the conservative route, set his man up for the field goal. So Snyder says that Anthony Binswanger is his man. He is hit from 32 yards out today. This will be from 26 out and right in the middle of the field. Yeah, I just don't like that. I mean, you, you've got, like I said, Penn, you've got them on their heels. you got a chance. You're at the 10, 20 seconds to go. You know, throw it in the end zone. And your quarterback's a fifth-year senior, and if there's nothing there, he knows to throw the thing out of bounds and, and take a chance and really blow the lid off of this thing. And instead, they're going to be content with a field goal attempt to try to go up seven here into the half. Well, especially when you have a guy like Darius Passmore to throw to. Sure. So uh, a little curious decision by Mark Snyder. Going conservative here with a 26-yard field goal attempt from Vince Warner. And it is good. So Vince Warner hits a couple of field goals. That was a very well put together drive by Marshall to close out the first half. The thundering herd who last played here against West Virginia in 1915 and lost 92-6 through 13-6 at the break. And how about the quarterbacks today? Morris outdueling Pat White here in the first half, not only through the air but on the ground as well. And he's got his Marshall thundering herd with a seven-point lead going in at halftime, playing very well on both sides of the ball. 
So Pat White and company trailing Marshall 13 to 6. Darius Passmore has been magnificent in the first half as we go to halftime. That is center Doug Lugerski, number 66. We are Marshall. That is the theme here, and Marshall is fired up as they are leading number three West Virginia 13 to 6 at the half. Pam Moore joined by Ray. This is a big surprise. Yeah, it really is. I can't believe the effort for Marshall's defense. They have just shut down Steve Slayton. They've kept Pat White in check. They've only given up the one big play, the long pass to Renaud. And they're all over the field. And I think West Virginia has to change tactics. They have to start going down the field, taking advantage of those one-on-one -on -one matchups that Marshall's given them in the secondary. Rich Rodriguez is the mastermind of this wide open offense, but Mark Snyder and his staff have been out doing them so far as they have been going to a lot of the short passes, the screens, and Steve Slayton has been bottled up all afternoon. West Virginia does get the ball first. And it is Raynaud, Darius Raynaud, who caught a 46-yard touchdown pass to give West Virginia a 6-3 lead in the first quarter. Returns it. First half stats weighted in favor of Marshall. Yeah, and look at it. Four times they've gone three and out. That's just outstanding defense. The thundering herd getting a lot of people to the football, flying around, and just making good tackles, not missing a lot of tackles. That is the key thus far. Only four, excuse me, only four missed tackles in that first half. All right, they have about 30 of them in this game last year. Right. They missed 30 tackles against West Virginia, doing much better. And one reason why they're leading 13-6. So let's see what adjustments West Virginia made during the half as Steve Slayton gets the first carry. Let's go down to Rob Simulcare with more from the field. All right, Pam, at halftime I spoke to Marshall head coach Mark Snyder, asked him how his defense is doing this. He said, smoke and mirrors. Basically, they're just playing real hard and playing very well. I also asked him why they elected to go for the field goal instead of taking a shot at the end zone at the end of the first half. He said they only had one timeout left and didn't want to risk it. And it turned out that at least they did get points, a 26-yarder from Anthony Binswanger to take the 13-6 lead. White with another short pass, but he flings this one out to Raynaud, who is by far his favorite target this afternoon. Raynaud picks up eight. Darius had four catches in the first half. One of them for a touchdown. And that one's good for a first down. So in this game, Pat White and Steve Slayton touted as Heisman candidates, and they have been bottled up and frustrated in the first half against a Marshall team that lost last week to Miami, 31 to three. Maybe Miami's better than I thought they were. A lot of noise, over 30,000 people in the stadium that officially seats 28,000. White on the carry, and good pursuit again by the green-clad thundering herd led by C.J. Spillman. C.J. Spillman makes the initial hit for the herd. West Virginia in that first half. 23 offensive plays, five for no gain, five negative yards plays. And look at these numbers. I mean, this is amazing. Steve Slayton, just 17 total yards. Last year against this team, he rushed 33 times for 203 yards. And you see Pat White not really getting off having a great game either. Credit that Marshall thundering her defense for tackling solid and hustling to the football. And now facing a second and three, opening drive of the second half. White zips it out to Slayton, who drops it. They lined him up wide, and he dropped it. J.J. Johnson on the coverage. Boy, he's just clearly rattled. He's, he's not gotten into his groove. He's not gotten comfortable yet because this is just a quick coming outside one on one. And Slayton loses his concentration on the football, trying to look out there and see who's coming up after him, which was J.J. Johnson. But it didn't matter because White couldn't make the catch. So now a third and three from the 45 of Marshall. Slayton standing next to White. 
And they go underneath again to Renaud for the first down. Six yards for Darius Renaud. And I think Pat White is playing pretty well. If anyone's having problems right now, it's, it's Steve Slayton because White has been on the money with his throws. He's been able to run the football with some success. He's had a couple of drops that have hurt him. And in particular, Sowers dropped one that would have kept the drive alive in deep in Marshall territory. But I think Pat White is playing fairly well. Yep, he is 10 for 14 for 86 yards and the touchdown. It was a 46-yard strike to Renaud in the first quarter. And Montel Glasgow jumps off sides. That's the first pre-snap penalty for Mark Snyder's team all day long. He had six of those last week. Defense, offsides, number 95. Five-yard penalty. It remains first down. And that was a huge point of emphasis for him, especially knowing the, the huge task that they had here, that they couldn't give anything away. And so far, so good as far as that, although Glasgow did get caught on their last one. We talked about how they looked immature against Miami. Maturity is a big theme when you talk to Mark Snyder. They were very mature here in the first half. First and five now. As Slayton gets it, tries to get around the right side, and finally a little bit of breathing room as Slayton picks up the first down. We go back for an update with Stan Barrett. All right, Pam, this Taco Bell studio update takes us to Norman, Miami, and number five Oklahoma hooking up there, and it's another big day for Sam Bradford so far. His second touchdown to Malcolm Kelly and the Sooners with a 14-3 lead on the Canes. To Stan, meanwhile, back here at Marshall, Steve Slayton has had his longest run of the day, 11 yards for the first down. First and 10 from the 23. Mountaineers trailing 13-6. That was the halftime score as well. Zip out. Raynaud is the man on the receiving end. He's able to elude one and more tacklers as Darius Raynaud breaks into the end zone for a second touchdown of the day. I mentioned it earlier, Darius Raynaud, Pat White called him the best athlete on the football team. That's pretty high praise on this Mountaineers football team. But he showed you that it may not be far from the truth right there because he caught that pass made a shake and bake and made a little move right here he's going to dodge that defender run past the other one break Spillman's tackle and take it into the end zone and Renaud with his second touchdown of this ball game he's been the offense so far for West Virginia him along with Pat White and the extra point by Pat McAfee West Virginia, their very first possession of the second half, and they take it in. Raynaud with two scores, and we're tied up. ESPN's College Football, brought to you by Acura. Acura, Advance, and Papa John's. Order your next pizza online at PapaJohns.com. We are coming to you from Huntington, West Virginia, in the southwestern corner of the state, Ohio and Kentucky, right here in a little triangle. City established in 1871, and that is the Ohio River that uh, runs right through the town and uh, separates uh, the borders. And uh, Rich Rodriguez. Uh, it's a hot day here. He's got to be at least happy by that last scoring drive, but uh, it's uh, the temperature is well into the 90s this afternoon. Yeah, and we're feeling it up here as well. And it's on the field. It's going to be a lot warmer than that because of the turf. So we'll see if Marshall has the conditioning to stay with West Virginia here in the second half. And West Virginia taking the opening kickoff of the second half. Seven plays, 66 yards, and it results in a Darius Reynaud touchdown catch. And this other guy, he's the other Darius. Darius Marshall. It's a live football. And it is going to be jumped on by Span, and then he is jumped on by a lot of Mountaineers. So the uh, flag is down, too. Not a great start here to the second half. A uh, mistake not getting on that ball immediately, letting it bounce around like that. Pat McAfee has had some great punts today and uh, handling all the kicking duties for West Virginia since about two-thirds of the way through last season, including the punting. Mark Snyder in his third year in charge at Illegal Marshall. Punt below the waist, number five of the receiving team. That penalty is half the distance to the goal, first and ten. So they are pushed back even farther with the penalty. Yeah, you can't block special teams below the waist and 
Darius Marshall coming up trying to protect Span, who's trying to get the football right low. Kind of a true freshman mistake there. Darius Marshall started this game off with a 77-yard kick return of the opening kickoff that set off the first field goal of the game for Marshall. But they are backed up on their own three. And trying to get him out of trouble is Kelvin Turner, and he does nicely by picking up about seven. Let's go back to that uh, last touchdown. Yeah, and Steve Slayton is going to be lined up right here in the backfield, and he's going to get a fake on this one, and that's going to freeze linebackers, and so the pursuit to this quick screen doesn't quite get there as quick as they would like, and it sets Renaud up to go ahead and make people miss and break tackles, but that was the poorest tackling play for Marshall all day long. Yeah, that was two obvious missed tackles on that play. They had been rock solid for most of the game as Turner is bottled up. He'll be about two yards short of the first down, so a third down coming up. This West Virginia offense, one of the most potent in the country for the last couple of years because of Slayton and White. And uh, they were held down in the first half with only three first downs on their first possession of the second half, four first downs and a touchdown. And that tells you that Rich Rodriguez and his staff made some real nice halftime adjustments and guys got in that locker room and realized that they're in a ball game here as we have a player down on the field getting some medical attention but they you know they're a seasoned ball club you know they're they're a veteran football team and they've been in situations where they've had to you know come back and make things happen after a slow start as they look at Johnny Dingle on the field we'll go back to Stan Barrett. All right, Pam, it was Michigan last week. Could it be Ohio State this week taking on Akron? Todd Beckman looking for Brian Robisky, but John Mackey with the interception. Second interception of the game for Beckman. Akron hasn't beaten Ohio State since 1894. Their coach was John Heisman back then. That was quite a while ago, Stan. Wow. Since so the 1890s, Akron with the safety up on Ohio State 2-0. Here, Marshall is locked in a tie as Darius Marshall gets it and runs for the first down. Johnny Dingle, by the way, was uh, banged up on the last play, but was able to walk off the field under his own power. And this is just a speed option here. And a nice read by Morris. He's going to take the ball. He's going to run it down here. And he's looking at this man right here to read to make that pitch. So as that guy comes across, actually see outside a wider guy comes across, gives him that pressure, he gets the pitch out on time, and there's a good block on the edge allowing Marshall to get that first down. So Bernard Morris leading the way for Marshall. And another handoff, plenty of room. Darius Marshall, the true freshman, with the speed, and he is all the way out to the 46-yard line. Larry Williams chased him down, but that's 28 yards for Marshall. And what a nice hole made by that offensive line. As go ahead and watch this, the guard and tackle both pull. Look at how huge that hole is right there for Darius Marshall. And when you get a hole like that and you get full speed going through there, you got a chance to bust off a big one, and that's what Marshall does. Boy, Darius Marshall able to run right away from Eric Wicks, who thought he had him dead to rights. So a big game. First and 10 now from the 46. They were backed up inside their five and wide open, perfectly thrown ball to EJ Wynn. Boy, Morris was right on the money with that one. Yeah, and he had a mismatch. EJ Wynn was on Eric Wicks. And Wicks is kind of that bandit player, which is half linebacker, half safety. And I'm telling you right now, that wind just blew right past him. Nice composure here by Morris in the pocket. He sits back there, sees the separation, and drops it in over the top of Wicks, and perfectly thrown football in a nice scheme. That was a 33-yard gain. Morris has three passes over 20 yards, has completed all three of them for an aggregate total of 97. Low snap, but he feels it cleanly. Again, takes his time. That's off the hands of Wynn and falls incomplete. Boy, West Virginia player had a good shot at it. Quinn Andrews had a chance for an interception, and that's been a kind of a bugaboo for this West Virginia defense. They had a chance for three interceptions that they dropped last week. This one goes right into the hands of Quentin Andrews, and he's not able to hold on to it. And you see Mark Snyder telling his receiver, you got to hold on to it. And he should have had it as well. 
But that West Virginia defense has had opportunities, but haven't made the plays. Andrews playing today was suspended for the Western Michigan game last week. Did not play because of a team rule violation. Morris with some backside pressure gets it off to pass more. And nothing doing as he got it right in the middle of the line and to lose a yard. Yeah, West Virginia brought the pressure on that one. They blitzed off of both edges. Morris had to get rid of that thing quick. And good, good pursuit by the defense to stop that play. West Virginia's pass defense last year was uh, not good. Out of 119 teams, they were 109th. And they're something that has been a point of emphasis, but those, those statistics can be skewed a little bit when you're stout against the run. Yeah, and also when you're ahead in ball games and force teams into a passing mode. So it's not a huge concern. At least it wasn't when we talked to Coach Castillo, the defensive coordinator. Short pass that time from Morris to pass more. Morris pass is completed to Chubb Small. Actually, it was Chubb Small, the running back coming out of the backfield. He picked up six. six yards to the so Bernard Morris, the senior from Orlando, has done a good job back there in the pocket. And one thing that Mark Snyder talked about with us, he said that uh, previously, especially last year, he said when things broke down, Morris would panic as a West Virginia player is being attended to, but he said last week, and certainly so far today, he, he doesn't seem to be showing any panic whatsoever. Yeah, he was real impressed with the way he had composure and poise last week because he took a pounding on him. At Miami University Hurricane defensive line was all over him, hitting him all over all day long, and he hung in there and he limped around and he continued to make plays and really showed some metal that really hadn't manifested itself here at Marshall since since his beginning as a quarterback. He's finally grown up as a fifth-year senior. Well, we had a nice talk with him yesterday. He's very composed and uh, looking forward. He would like to get a chance to play professional football. And with his athleticism, you know, I don't know that he would be a quarterback at the next level, but I think he, he's a guy that could run around, maybe move to receiver and, and make plays for you, and he has great running ability. I, I would put him back there as a punt returner and give him a chance because he is so elusive. Good size, over 6'4", and 211 pounds. And that's Kent Richardson, the starting right corner for West Virginia, who's up and walking across the field on his own power. That's good to see. So after he clears the field, we'll have another field goal attempt, a 34-yarder for Anthony Binswanger, who's two for two today. He's hit from 32 and 26. And Marshall has made a statement with this drive that they're not going away. They got the running game going pretty good with Marshall, popped out a big one and hit some short passes. Had the nice one down the middle, and the offense looks good. And this would be a terrific response to West Virginia scoring a touchdown on its opening series of the second half. Binswanger for the lead. And he has been perfect today. Three for three. And Marshall takes the lead right back. A flag, however, is down on the field. And it's offsides against West Virginia. Yeah, but it won't affect the down and distance in terms of giving him a first down. So I think they're going to leave them points on the board. Yeah, it was fourth and six. Now, if Coach Snyder was a real gambler, which he's <laughs> proven that he is not, he might think of going for it on a fourth and one, but I, I think he's going to keep his points. Yeah, he went conservative towards the end of the first half when he had a timeout and instead just set up his field goal kicker in the middle of the field to kick a 26-yarder in the last play of the half. Offsides, number nine of the defense. That penalty is declined. Field goal is good. So Marshall takes the lead 16 to 13 over West Virginia. But there's a dynamic duo for the Mountaineers, Slayton and White. When we return, they'll be back on the field. Hey, ESPN is here and they want to know who we are. Who are we? We are Indeed, we are Marshall.
Marshall is the rallying cry for the Thunder and Herd fans, and they have been shouting it loud and proud for this entire football game as they have taken the lead now 16 to 13 over number three in arch rival West Virginia. These two teams have not played in Huntington since November 6, 1915. A 92 to 6 spanking by West Virginia. They're unbeaten in this series, 6 and 0. Noel Devine, the exciting true freshman in the game as a returner, and he carries it up to the 35-yard line. That's a 25-yard kick return as we go back to the studio in Stan Barrett. All right, Pam, we told you about Akron and Ohio State. Well, we've got another MAC team leading a Big Ten team. It's Bowling Green leading Michigan State. Tyler Sheehan to Tyrone Pronte. And Pronte with a touchdown catch. That tied the game at seven. And then Sheehan, who was a MAC Offensive Player of the Week, with a touchdown run. And they're leading 14-7 right now. They beat Minnesota in overtime last week. So they've already beaten a Big Ten team. Thank you, Stan. BG off to a great start. Michigan State just destroyed UAB last week. And Darius Raynaud, who has caught over 100 yards worth of uh, passes, drops that one. Yeah, and that's just a uh, lack of concentration as we check in the in-game comparison here with Steve Slayton and Pat White. And the numbers are not what you would expect for a couple of Heisman candidates. And give Marshall credit, they're playing very good right now on defense. There's three passes that have been dropped today by West Virginia players. Now second and ten. White gives it to the big guy, Owen Schmidt, and Schmidt, all 260 pounds of them, picks up a couple and goes down. For more on the dynamic duo for West Virginia, let's go down to Rob Simulcare. Well, Pam, after West Virginia's last offensive series, Slayton and White were on the bench together. Slayton was really showing some frustration. He was shaking his head, looked frustrated, and Pat White walked up to him, said, you all right? And Slayton nodded and gave him a little tap on the shoulder pads and said, let's get back out there. So you can tell there's some frustration with Slayton, but White trying to get his running back over. White, a terrific leader. Those two are roommates. Slayton, seven carries for 19 yards. This is a guy who averages 124 yards per game in his career. White keeps it, rolling out behind the big offensive line and gets close to the first down. And they put Slayton up at the top as a decoy and totally ran away from him. And Pat White, very close to that first down. I think he's going to get it. That line, that whole line just going in unison, a zone blocking scheme. And that allows Pat White to pick and choose wherever he sees a little opening, he can cut it up. Otherwise, he keeps drifting to the outside until something opens up. That's a good spot for West Virginia. First down, Michael Villagrana and Owen Schmidt, the two big guys, the uh, tight end fullback hybrids, were blocking in front of White on that play. Here's some elusiveness from Slayton, as he really had to work for this first down. Until Blasco makes the stop, but Slayton picks up 10. Yeah, and he shows you the ability to change direction. This is a zone play to the right. He's going to work outside. He sees it get bottled up, and he's able to change directions and accelerate faster than anyone else can get to him, and that allows him to get that first down in a 10-yard game. Slayton gets it again, dances around, and is pulled down from behind, picks up about five more. Steve Slayton, even though he struggled today, has gone over 3,000 yards for his career, the third West Virginia player ever to do it. And you see eight rushes for 30 yards coming off his 16th career 100-yard game last week. As I said, Pam, he's a guy he'll get a little bit, a little bit, and bam, he'll go. We haven't seen him go yet today. Second and six from Marshall 40, and Slayton again gets the handoff. And he's going to be stopped close to another first down. Josh Johnson making the stop as Slayton lost his helmet. You know, and, and Steve Slayton and Pat White are roommates, live together, and, and it's kind of fun talking to the two of them. You can see the, the mutual respect and admiration that they have for each other. They, they love to sit back and just relax and tell each other stories. That's really kind of how they spend their downtime. Nothing real major or exciting, and they both kind of take their turns being the flamboyant personality. 
said those two are attached at the hip. Three straight Slayton runs broken up by a white keeper who stumbles. A flag comes down at the end of the play. Maurice Kitchens credited with the tackle as White stumbled on the field turf. Maurice Kitchens, penalty marker on the play. Mark Snyder, class of 1988 here at Marshall. Five yard face mask, number 45 on the defense. Five yards from the end of the run. It remains first down. And Kitchens, the tackler, called for the inadvertent face mask, much to Mark Snyder's chagrin. Yeah, but he told us he could accept those kind of penalties, the aggressive things, the holdings, the face mask, the things he really needed to eliminate today were the pre-snap problems, and they have done so with just one so far today. So a lot more discipline in that area. First and five after the penalty from the 29. Slayton again. He has room on the right. So fast as he was able to run away from the defender, Aaron Johnson. Picked up nine yards. The right shows you the acceleration. He got a nice block from his fullback, Owen Schmidt, who kind of pinned the edge and lets him get around. See him make that cut and then explode to the outside. He's got that ability, and it's usually just a matter of time before he busts a big one. 11 carries for 49 yards now for Slate. Another first down now on the 20. And Pat White, he has speed as well. White into the end zone for the Mountaineer touchdown. And West Virginia decided to just run the football on that drive. They think they can wear down this smaller Marshall front. And they proved it on that series as they kept to the ground. They kept pounding it with the zone plays, some veer plays. This is just a quarterback sweep to the right. And look at Steve Slayton getting the block for his roommate, springing Pat White into the end zone. A nine-play drive. The last six plays of that drive were indeed runs as Pat McAfee adds the extra point. And uh, we've had uh, back-and-forth scores here. West Virginia with a couple of touchdowns here in the third quarter. First, we saw Slayton with some speed, and that Pat White turned on the Jets. West Virginia back on top again. Stan Verrett right back here in the studio. Let's get you an update on a couple of other games that we're televising over on ESPN. It's Wake Forest with a 10-6 lead on Nebraska. The backup quarterback, Brent Hodges, in for Riley Skinner, who's out with a shoulder. Hodges with a touchdown run, and wake up on the Huskers. Over on ABC, Oklahoma gets a couple of touchdown passes from Sam Bradford to Malcolm Kelly, and they lead the Canes 21-3. And Pam Ward, you've got the Mountaineers on top now at Marshall. That's right, Stan Barrett. We got a good one back and forth here in the third quarter. Steve Slayton and Pat White kind of getting it together in that last drive. Pat White taking it the last 20 yards for the touchdown, but I got Wake up setting Nebraska right now against the sound. So some good action. Short kickoff is taken by Small, and this is terrific field position just short of midfield for the Thundering Herd. Yeah, and if you can field that hot grounder, you'll get good field position. That's the key to it, and Chuck Small did an excellent job of scooping that thing up and then just sticking it upfield and getting it out to midfield, so the Thundering Herd in excellent field position to try to answer that last score. I see Pat White trying to stay cool on the sidelines. Temperatures predicted to be in the mid-90s, and with that field turf, it's got to be a lot hotter down there on that field. And right now, Marshall, for the second time this quarter and third time this game, finds itself trailing mighty West Virginia. And the ball is loose. Marshall fumbles it. Darius Marshall fumbles it, and West Virginia comes up with it. Ryan Mundy who transferred over from the University of Michigan after he graduated, picks it up. And that is the first turnover of the game. And a great hit up there, I believe it was Johnny Dingle who comes up and penetrates his play. And bam, right there, he makes a hit. Actually, it's Reed Williams, the middle linebacker, along with Johnny Dingle in there stuffing that thing. And it was Williams who forced the fumble, knocked it loose. And Marshall gave up an excellent chance there to get back on top as they were in wonderful field position, but they gave it up. They started from the 50, and now it's West Virginia's turn to start from the 50, and it's Slayton going right. Gets a couple of good blocks. 
and picks up about eight yards. Yeah, just a, another zone play again, and you're starting to see that West Virginia Wilson offensive line spot. wear Marshall down a little bit. Whereas in the first half, Marshall was getting penetration. They were making plays for no gain and negative plays. Haven't seen much of that here in the second half. Slayton now up to 56 yards on 12 carries for the game. Second and three now from the 43. White little play action and the roll has Raynaud, goes up, gets it, brings it down. And Raynaud is slippery. Finally taken down in the at the 19-yard line by Ashton Hall. He made five guys miss from the time he caught the ball until the time he went down. I mean, it, it's just an amazing effort by Raynaud. You see him make this catch. One guy, two guys, three guys, fourth guy, another guy misses. He made five guys miss in a matter of about 10 yards. Now he's being looked at. Over on the sidelines, first and 10 from the 19. West Virginia has not been stopped so far in the second half. Blitz is picked up. Big Owen Schmidt lowers his head and rumbles for five yards. Schmidt, 6'3", 260, a transfer from Division III Wisconsin River Falls, where he gained over 1,000 yards. And then, like uh, so many success, success stories at West Virginia, including Rich Rodriguez, walked on and uh, has done quite well. Yeah, and he's a, he's a beast in there. You saw the little note where he's broken eight face masks. Yeah. That means he puts his face in there a lot. Eight career broken face masks. That's a heck of a statistic. That's a good record. And is only a junior. Second and five, and this time Slayton makes a couple of moves. Picks up three yards. Aaron Johnson makes the stop, his fifth tackle of the Aaron afternoon. Guys trying to stay cool. That's the middle linebacker, Reed Williams, who forced that fumble and put West Virginia in position to go up a couple of scores. Darius Marshall coughed it up right at midfield. That's where this drive started. Third and two for the Mountaineers. Slayton is split, is split wide left. But White hangs onto it, and Pat White is able to wriggle down close to the one yard line. White got 10 yards on that run, and it's first and goal. When we were talking to Steve Dunlop, the offense or defensive coordinator for Marshall, he said, we, we have to get two guys, maybe three, to the point of attack every time because they make guy, the first guy misses. He doesn't very often make the tackle, and you saw that was the case on that last one there with Pat White putting a little spin move on, and Marshall was able to rally and stop the touchdown, but Pat White is getting it done on the ground. First and goal just inside the two, and that's an easy touchdown. As Steve Slayton goes in for the score. And the offensive line for the Mountaineers, Figner, Rodemeyer, Dent, Isdenner, and Stanchek are dominating the line of scrimmage right now. On that drive, they just knocked Marshall clear off the ball. And the lightest guy of the five you just mentioned is Mike Dent at 285. Everybody else is at least 300. And the Marshall defensive line depleted certainly with Albert McClellan's season-ending injury starting to get worn down as McAfee puts through the extra point. And there's his Danner and some of the big guys in front blocking for Pat White and Steve Slayton. Slayton's one-yard run, McAfee's extra point, extends the lead to 27-16. Yeah, and I think that's part of the mindset of Rich Rodriguez and his football team is they love to run the football. And they are pounding the ball here in the second half. Steve Slayton and Patrick White got us to thinking about some other dynamic duos. They certainly are dynamic, both of them being mentioned as Heisman Trophy candidates. Batman and Robin All back right. in the day. Oh, Bert and Ernie. Dynamic right there. Not so much for me. You know, you get thumbs down <laughs> on that one. And for the chicks out there, Thelma and Louise, although that didn't end very well, neither did this marriage. What a great TV show. Uh, they were a great act, and of course, Mork and Mindy. But we got Steve and Pat. Slayton and White, and they are doing it here in the third quarter as they trailed at halftime. 13 to 6. It will come out with a couple of touchdowns. 
So three touchdowns here in the third quarter. And Rich Rodriguez, the offensive mastermind, another pop-up as they're trying to keep the ball away from Darius Marshall. They do, and that's a good tackle. As Span is taken down, let's go back to the studio now and stand for All right, Pam Akron and Ohio State. The Buckeyes have taken the lead now, but they can't stay out of their own way. Brian Hartline back to receive the punt, and he coughs it up. Third turnover for the Buckeyes in the first half. They lead 3-2 at the break in Ohio. Louisiana, Monroe, and Clemson. Tigers coming off their big win over Florida State on Labor Day. That's... Cullen Harper to Tyler Grissom for the touchdown and knotted up at seven at Clemson. Yeah. Thank you, Stan. I heard Chris Spielman saying last night that uh, when T-shirt sales in uh, Columbus for Appalachian State T-shirts were way up. I'll bet. I think so. The fans in Akron or in uh, Ann Arbor might return the favor with Akron T-shirts if they can beat Ohio State. Big time speed for Darius Passmore as he is finally shoved out of bounds at the 42 of West Virginia. That's a 30-yard run. And he's slow getting up. Yeah, and that's not a good sign to see him holding that leg for Marshall fans. But what an explosive run by Passmore. Once he got the ball in his hands, that thing opened up a little bit, and he just flies through it. Now, that's perfect timing on the motion and the handoff. And when you get that kind of timing, it's a foot race to the edge and pass more. He's looking, he's got a running head start. And he's got a lead blocker and Shope out there. And that's a nice football play for him. The only negative is Passmore down on the sidelines. Grabbed his right knee as he fell. Passmore was a terrific sprinter. Ran a 10-7, 100 meters, which is blazing as they were going to help him back to the bench. Yeah, he uses his grandfather as motivation his grandfather kept him going and, and had passed away, and he put the Passmore name tattooed on his back. You see it right now on his jersey. Well, if you were to peel that jersey off and those pads off, you'd see it tattooed across his back, just like that in three-inch high letters. A much more permanent tribute. They're going to take a look at him as they lay him down on the table. But Passmore picked up 30. First and 10 now from the 42. Morris going up top. And that's his talented tight end, Cody Slate. Touchdown, thundering herd. They answer the West Virginia touchdown right back. And that's just a corner route by the tight end, Cody Slate. He got behind the receiver, a perfectly thrown ball from Bernard Morris. And Slate, all he had to do was catch it, make sure he stayed in bounds and run up the sidelines. And now Marshall looks like they're gonna, I mean, they're gonna I think they're gonna kick this thing. Looks like the possibility of going for two. I think it's too early for that. Absolutely. But it would have gotten them within three, but they're gonna kick it. I agree. I agree. It hurt Michigan last week going for two early and not getting it, then you just keep falling behind. All right, chasing those points. So they're going with the Automatic extra point, and it is when Vince Vaughn was kicking him. So the last two plays covered 72 yards in only 20 seconds. Well, what a perfect throw right over the top. Slate tight ropes along the sideline. And bam, right there. Perfect throw. Nice route. And Marshall answers in a big way. And they needed that one because it was starting to slip away a little bit. Instead, it's only a four-point lead in this crazy third quarter. 10 points now for Marshall in this third quarter, 21 for West Virginia. And a nice looking set of numbers there for Bernard Morris. 14 to 22, 215 yards already and a pair of touchdowns. He was an invited walk out, walk on out of Orlando. And he is uh, showing a lot of poise for Mark Snyder this afternoon. And he was a delight to talk to, to a very respectful young man. And Easy smile, and you can see the the confidence that he, he's had. I did a game here a couple years ago, and he was a little younger back then, and splitting time with, with Skinner, a quarterback, and he wasn't as sure of himself. But you can see that he's really matured in this Marshall Thundering Hurt program. As Passmore is up on the sideline trying to get loose, so that's a great sign. As Passmore went down after a big catch, 
clutching his right knee. Noel Devine, who is uh, really one of the great recruits out of Florida, along with Jock Sanders. He got the kickoff and was tackled by Kelvin Turner, one of the running backs. See if West Virginia continues to just pound the ball on the ground. Steve Slayton and Pat White, two Heisman Trophy candidates. Pat White over 100 yards on the on the uh, through the air, excuse me, and approaching it on the ground, out rushing his roommate. Three possessions in this quarter and three touchdowns for West Virginia. White on the keeper. Eludes one would be tackler and then steps out of bounds after about a five yard gain. And Marshall, the tackling is getting a little sloppy. You know, in the first half end, they had just four missed tackles. In this half, they've already had 10. Ooh. And we, well, we saw five on the one play. <laughs> right. That'll, that'll pile up in a hurry when you have five of them. Just trying to stop White and Slayton. And we'll say again, it's a very warm afternoon here in Huntington. Second and five from the 35. Slayton and Schmidt in the backfield. They give it to Slayton right up the gut. And Steve has stopped a couple of yards short of the first down. And they've decided that they can run the football, and that's what they're doing. And right now we'll get another update from Stan Barrett. All right, Pam, Nebraska and Wake Forest. Nebraska ran the ball 70 times last week against Nevada. Different story today. 11-play drive, all passes. Sam Keller to Sean Hill to finish it off, and the Huskers with the lead. Good one going on at Wake Forest, and a good one here. A defensive stop. Joe Bragg with the tackle. And West Virginia will be stopped for the first time here in the third quarter. And the Marshall defenders got up the field into the gaps, and that really left nowhere for Pat White, or excuse me, yeah, for Pat White to run the football. They had four three and outs in the first half at West Virginia. This is their first of this one. Pat McAfee back into punt for the first time this half. Span and Small waiting for Marshall. And Small retreats a little bit, picks it up. That's a late hit. And they got him for it as he was hit clearly out of bounds. So some extra yardage will be tacked on. Yeah, and that's just a guy losing the place of where he is on the field. He's trying to do too much. There's Emmanuel Span, and no doubt about it. And that's Charles Pugh, backup defensive back. He's getting a chance to play on special teams and got a little overzealous. After the play was over, personal foul, late hit out of bounds, number 15 of the kicking team, 15 yards, first down. So tack on 15 more yards, and the ball is placed right at midfield for Bernard Morris. <laughs> Morris's line, a couple of touchdown passes, some really nice touch on those passes as well. A 38-yarder to Darius Passmore in the second quarter, and a 42-yarder just recently to Cody Slate. Passmore back in there. Good to see, because he went out holding his knee on his last catch. Morris, with time, decides to hit a receiver, and he finds him. On the sideline, that is complete to Passmore. Yeah, Passmore really wasn't a primary guy, as you said, in this route, Pam. He's just going to run upfield and kind of settle down as he sees the defense drop back. And credit Morris for finding him. He had, he had the time to do it. You see he's sitting up, he's looking down the middle, looking down the middle. Finally, no pressure on him. He looks outside, sees this guy open, and throws another dime right to him. Another example of the maturity is he did not panic and found the open receiver. Maybe a loss of a half a yard on that play. Chug Small tackled behind the line. Let's go down to Rob Simulcare. Pam, this Marshall sideline is about as jacked up as any sideline I've been on uh, in recent years. Coach Mark Snyder, he's about as animated as Matthew McConaughey was in that movie. He's running out off the sideline. He was actually running over to 
to uh, one of his players who's injured out for the year and yelling at him, telling him how to make a play. I mean, he, he is just running around and cannot be stopped right now. This is a very, very excited Marshall sideline. And of course, Mark Snyder went to school here, actually grew up as a Marshall fan, said he used to come to games with his grandfather. So he's been waiting for this for a long time. Kelvin Turner with the carry as a flag is down. Near the line of scrimmage. Five-yard game for Turner, but will wait the flag. Coach Snyder's mother, Joe, his biggest critic, by the way, she'll sit in and watch him do press conferences and, and correct every little thing for him. But she's a huge Marshall fan. That whole family, they were more interested in what Marshall was doing than what he was doing, their son Mark Snyder, when he was at Ohio State. Holding number 79 on offense, 10 yards from the previous spot. Pardon me, from the line of scrimmage. That's Daniel Baldridge, a sophomore from Louisiana. And there you see Mark Snyder. And uh, he was a, an assistant at Ohio State when they were winning champ, you know, the championship. And, uh, and he said that sometimes his mother would say to him that uh, you know, she, uh, she had to work right. and couldn't come see the game at Ohio State. Columbus is only a couple hours away. And he said he heard from other people that mom was watching Marshall. She came here to watch Marshall play home games rather <laughs> than go see her son. You know, and when it's in your blood, it's in your blood. So I'm sure Joe is uh, very excited and jacked up about this one as we're approaching the end of the third quarter. Second and 21 after the holding penalty and down goes Morris in the arms of Morty Ivey. So West Virginia coming up with a five yard loss on that sack and that will end the third quarter. And what a third quarter it was. West Virginia scoring three touchdowns, but Marshall's hanging right in there. First time they've played here in 92 years against West Virginia, and we've only got a four-point ball game. for the first time since 1915. These two teams are playing in this town, the campus of Marshall University. West Virginia 6-0 in this series. They played last year. The series had been discontinued for about 60 years before they matched up in 97. And a penalty flag is down as the fourth quarter is about to get underway. And I think Cody Slate, the tight end, jiggled a little bit in his stance. Ball stop. Number 85, offense, five yards, remains third down. That is exactly what they got. Slate, the very promising tight end in his second year as a sophomore. And there's our score by the quarter. It was an explosion, 31 total points scored in the third quarter. 338 yards combined for both teams after they only had 302 yards combined in the first half. I think the, the defenses are getting a little more tired out there. There are also 17 first downs combined in the third quarter as Chuck Small gets the carry. Chuck Small with the carry. Picked up five on that before Ryan Mundy made the stop, a senior from Pittsburgh. Last year, these two teams met up in Morgantown, and West Virginia won it by the final of 42 to 10. They have totally blown blown out not just six nothing but totally outscored Marshall in this series until today. Last time they played here the final was 92 to six as Ron Rivers punts it and it goes into the end zone so uh, West Virginia will get it at the 20. This college football season, ESPN will be counting down the top 25 greatest players in college football. Let's check out our preview. The 25 greatest players in college football history, presented by IBM, coming in two weeks. IBM, getting it done. It was an expert panel. People could vote on uh, quite a list. The original list was huge, trying to narrow it down. I don't think I was on it, but probably should have been. I think you should have been. Thank you. They asked my opinion. That's right. And uh, a lot of guys who have made it in the National Football League were on that list. 
but some guys who've had great college careers should certainly be considered. And as Owen Schmidt is bottled up, gets maybe a yard. Schmidt from Fairfax, Virginia. So if you're just joining us, this uh, this has been a ball game from the get-go. Darius Marshall took the opening kick 77 yards, and Marshall took a 3-0 lead and a 13-6 lead into the half. But West Virginia started to run the ball a lot more in the third quarter. Steve Slayton had two yards on the ground in the first half, 62 yards on the ground in the third quarter alone. So they are starting to play some West Virginia football and wearing down this Marshall front, but boy, they are still in it. They won't go away. Keeping it is White, decided not to pitch it back to Schmidt, and he picks up the first down. As Pat White got 10 yards on that, Ashton Hall with the stop. He's running the veer here. He's just going to read this defensive end up top. That's the guy he's looking at. Actually, it's the outside back of the next guy. I'll see how 91 closed down Johnny Jones to take away that dive, and then Pat White will pull it and still have the pitch option as he, option as he hits the perimeter. And look at him. He's over 100 yards now, both running and throwing the ball. His 10th career 100-yard rushing game. As Slayton gets into the act, Steve lands on top of one of his offensive linemen out near the 38-yard line. Maurice Kitchens makes the stop. Slayton has, uh, of course, been talked about uh, for the Heisman Trophy. He says all he's thinking about is championship, but people are going to look at this score, Ray, struggling against a Marshall team. And, and really, these guys have to run the table, I think, to be considered for the national championship. And you see Slayton really coming on here in the second half. Yeah, he's, he's really been a, a better back in the second half, more focused, but he still has yet to break the big one that we usually see from him. On the rollout, White hits Owen Schmidt, and Schmidt is into Marshall territory as he is tackled down around the 47. That's a 16-yard gain. And he could have got more. He ran into his own guy, Darrell Jala, the receiver out there, was looking for somebody to block and ends up smashing into Owen Schmidt. Schmidt, one of the many walk-ons. Rich Rodriguez is a former walk-on himself. Really takes a shining to them, has tryouts for them, and gives them legitimate chances to make the team in play. Yeah, he's got 26 walk-ons kids that are getting money now in this program. Uh, and, uh, Pat White again heading towards the sidelines, about a yard short of the first down as we go back to Stan Barrett. All right, Pam Clemson cracked the top 25 this week at number 25 after they knocked off Florida State today, taking on Louisiana Monroe. It's Colin Harper deep to Jacoby Ford, and the Tigers out to a 14-7 lead. Thank you, Stan. So Louisiana Monroe playing them tough early, but now Clemson Breaking out on top as they play in Death Valley. We've got a great atmosphere here. Over 30,000 people crammed into the 28,000-seat stadium. Largest crowd ever to see a football game here. As Slayton does break through right through the middle, twirls around and picks up another first down. Kitchens with the stop of 12 more for Slayton. And he was so close to busting out the other end on that one. And Kitchens just got a hold of him. Or he would have he hit that gas pedal and been gone. The remarkable thing about Slayton, he played all of last year with a broken right wrist. Thinks he broke it originally in his freshman year against Connecticut. Finally had surgery in the offseason, has a pin in there, and he still was wonderful last year. With 1,700 yards plus on the ground, the West Virginia record. And he gets it again. And that's a, a case of a kid just being too tough for his own good. You know, he's, he's got this little injury that's bothering him, but he isn't saying anything. And he keeps fighting through it, fighting through it, and eventually it did cost him a couple of fumbles that he had against Louisville. They were tied directly to that wrist problem, and he got it taken care of with that surgery in January. He's got a pin in there, and he'll have that for the rest of his life. Because it does not bother him at all right now. His white hangs on to it, looking for a first down, and he has it as he steps out of bounds. Steve Slayton last year, a school record, 1,744 yards. And he uh, it was remarkable, fourth in the Heisman Trophy voting. And again, doing that, not just the broken right wrist, but you remember he also had a nerve problem that made his left wrist weak. So he was playing basically with no good hands. Yeah, and it's tough when you're running the football. A lot of times you see backs switching the ball from hand to hand to keep it away from contact. And he didn't have that luxury. He's on the sideline now, Owen Schmidt. 
is in the backfield with Pat White. First down from the 16. The Marshall fans screaming for a defensive stop. White hangs onto it. They keep him in bounds as he picks up about four. West Virginia next week will go to Maryland, which really, if you look at their schedule, as Slayton takes a blow on this very hot afternoon, Maryland really looks like their toughest non-conference opponent. Yeah, the way they're going to get into it is that the last five games in that Big East schedule, when they take on the likes of, of Rutgers and Louisville and Pitt and Connecticut, Cincinnati, those are going to be tough games for them. Yep, finishing with the backyard ball. They do host Pittsburgh this year, does West Virginia on December 1st. Second and six. Hand off to Noel Devine, and the slippery freshman goes into the end zone for a touchdown. His first, and now his second collegiate score. And slippery is the right word. And he's not the biggest of running backs. They list him at 5'8", 170 pounds. And it's hard. That's a hard target to hit. And then because he's so low to the ground, they, they slide off of him. And he's got explosiveness and power from that small frame. And he showed it on that touchdown run. True freshman from Tampa as McAfee adds the extra point. And Devine came out of high school. Some, some of the uh, pundits said that he's the most exciting high school player since Reggie Bush. High praise. Pretty good company. This was nifty. He's in the end zone, and the lead has been extended to 11. This telecast is being broadcast in high definition, available on ESPN2 HD, presented by Pioneer Kuro HDTV. They're the thundering herd, and Pat Buffalo gave his life so he could be in the football building here. Again, over 40,000 folks. I shorted it before. 40,000 in a 38,000 seat capacity. Whatever you count it, it's the largest crowd ever to see a football game. And it's uh, it's over capacity. And, uh, and they're getting their money's worth today because Marshall has come out, and even though they're trailing by 11 now here, they have played very sound football and have grown up a little bit here today. They led at the half. 13 to 6 before Pat White and company put 21 up on the third quarter. And now Noel Devine with a 12 yard touchdown run makes it 34 23, but still plenty of time left. 10 28 to go. Marshall has all three of its timeouts remaining. Another short kick to Span. And Emmanuel Span slips one tackle. Another flag is down. As Span is taken down just short of the 40 yard line. That's a 14 yard return. Eric Turner credited with the tackle. And there is Noel Devine, listed at around six feet tall. Face pass, number 15 of the kicking team. 15 yards, first down. That's a second 15 yarder on Charles Pugh. No doubt he'll get a talking to on the uh, trip back up to Huntington. Noel Devine actually listed at 5'8", 170. So a very, uh, where, the, where the future is bright, and there's been speculation that Steve Slayton might want to go to the National Football League a year early, but you got Devine and another guy named Jock Sanders waiting in the bullpen. Yeah, they're, they're, they're well stocked. And we asked Steve Slayton about that, and he said, I'm not thinking about anything like that. I'm just thinking about trying to win a championship this year. Have to beat Marshall today to keep those dreams alive. Marshall starting from the 46 in West Virginia territory. How did Morris get out of that jam? Bernard Morris will be dropped for a loss. So he was able to get away from some would-be tacklers. And Morris comes up limping. Yeah, that was Zach Cooper, the defensive lineman, who had the pressure, but Morris was able to get away. Bernard Morris has played a very steady game. We are joining you from Joan C. Edwards Stadium in Huntington, West Virginia. Pam Ward, Ray Bentley, and Rob Simulcare as the first time these two teams have met in this town in 92 years. And that's Brian Anderson, the backup quarterback, loosening up quickly in case Morris can't go back in the game. Morris is tough. But uh, he might have to come out for a spell. And Anderson got in for three snaps last, or three series last week. 
So he's been in there a little bit. It's not like his first time out. But you can see at the end of this play is where he comes up limping a little bit. It's hard to tell when he got the injury in that regard, but he didn't display it until the end. So Anderson is in, went to Mayo High School in Louisville. As Ray mentioned, did play last week in the loss to Miami. Three for eight, 21 yards through the air, and one interception. Richard freshman, 6'3", 190. And now in, in the biggest rivalry game for Marshall. And he completes his first pass. That's a smart guy to go to. Cody Slate, the tight end, has a first down as we, or excuse me, has uh, picked up about five as we go to the studio. All right, Pam, more college football coming your way here on ESPN2. The second of our four games today, Boston College and North Carolina State. Matt Ryan, five touchdown passes last week. Looking for more against the Wolfpack. Kickoff from 2.30. Stan, a lot of eyes on that one. Tom O'Brien going back to Chestnut Hill with his new football team, NC State. Yeah, yeah. Well, you think they'll give him a, um, uh, an ovation or will he hear some boos? Well, he should hear an ovation as Anderson flicks that one over the middle and it's incomplete. Everybody wondering how Bernard Morris is. Let's go to Rob Simulcare. All right, Pam, they are looking at Bernard Morris's right foot or ankle. It looks more like his foot than his ankle right now. And at halftime, he came off the field limping a bit at the end of the second quarter. They taped that same right foot up at halftime. And so he may have aggravated whatever uh, took place in the first half of that. So they're looking at it right now. He obviously very frustrated not to be in there. And we'll see if he gets back in. Well, you know, there's no place he'd rather be. His mom, Marcia, and his brother, Shannon, drive up from Florida to see home games here, about a 12-hour drive. As the punt by Binswanger heads into the end zone, West Virginia starts from the 20. So West Virginia starting to flex its muscle here in the second half, leading Pesky Marshall 34-23. Power to surprise and ESPN game plan. See the most college football every Saturday. To order, call your pay per view provider. ESPN game plan lives here. Gino's Pizza and Spaghetti, very famous here in Huntington, features the original scoreboard from Fairfield Stadium, a final score of the only home win for the 1971 Marshall team following that tragic plane crash in 1970 that took 75 lives. In 1971, they won two ball games total, including that win here against Xavier, 15 to 13. Later in the year, they won also against Bowling Green. But uh, what a what an inspirational story! Yeah, and they scored on the last play of that game to pull that victory out, and that was such a watershed moment for this entire community to come back. And, and nobody thought they had a chance rebuilding that team. They had the Marshall Rule which allowed freshmen to play in that 1971 season here. And that was the one big one at home. And what an amazing thing and catharsis that was for this community. We also beat Bowling Green later on in that season. And we had a visit. Jack Daniel was a guest on the phone with us earlier today. Great guest. And uh, he was the head coach who took on the challenge of rebuilding this program as Steve Slayton Burrows forward for a couple. And Slayton now is over 100 yards for the game, which is remarkable considering yeah. he had two yards in the first half. And he's that kind of back where you just keep giving him the ball because you know he's going to get his. And I know we've made a big deal about it up here, but he could care less really how many yards he gets. He just wants to lead that man's football team to victory, and that, that's his main focus. His 17th career 100-yard game, he has 102 yards in the second half. West Virginia has scored 28 points since halftime. Owen Schmidt with another first down run. That's the, uh, the big powerful back picking up eight yards. Look at the explosion in the third quarter by this West Virginia offense. And the bulk of that coming on the ground. They struggled early. They tried to throw a lot of short passes out to the flat in that first you know, few series, and Marshall was ready for that, just put the kibosh on it, and West Virginia decided, you know what, we're just going to run it at you because we're bigger, 
and we're stronger and we feel that, that that's the way to get it done and they have been successful since they made that decision. Marshall did take a 13 to 6 lead at halftime as a flag is down Slayton another flag down there's the Steve Slayton breaking free but a couple of flags are down Slayton picked up 14. I believe Marshall was on sides so this one should stand. Slayton, the sophomore from uh, Levittown, Pennsylvania. Offside, number 90 of the defense. Penalty is declined. First down. Actually, Slayton now a junior as uh, they, they do wipe out that, wipe out the penalty. Four, 14 more for Slayton. Later tonight, ESPN2 brings you not one, but two great college football games starting at 6 Eastern. Jimmy Clausen in charge of Notre Dame as they travel to take on Penn State. Then at 9.15, LSU's terrific defense takes on Virginia Tech. For more information, log on to ESPN.com. First career start, Virginia Clausen will be in Happy Valley. Yeah, and that's going to be interesting. And Matt Flynn making his first career start, start down there for LSU, at least at home. It'll be his third career start, first one at home. Noel Devine has a touchdown and now a close to another first down. It's Virginia Tech with that very emotional win last week against East Carolina as uh, you know they uh, were going through so much they are going through a healing process much like the folks here did very different circumstances obviously with the whole team uh, being lost in a plane crash here but that terrible uh, shooting on the campus of Virginia Tech, very emotional. They, they struggled a little bit against East Carolina, so some concerns for them heading into tonight's game. Yeah, and tonight will really be the test because with all the extraneous things going on and the emotions, it's really hard to get a gauge on Frank Beamer's football team in that ball game, but we'll find out a lot more as they go down there to Tiger Stadium and try to knock off LSU. Pat White dancing for a first down and let's go back to Blacksburg some of the images last week as the fans got ready for a football game and also tried to heal from uh, really what put Virginia Tech in the national news headlines. Yeah and I think that's one of the great things that football college football brings you is uh, a way to have for everybody to rally and be together be on the same page and, and as a community, try to get past and through and over things. Because it is, after all, just a game, but it can uh, do a lot of a lot of magical things in, in hard times. First and ten, and there's Slayton again. And of course, Marshall went through a very similar thing when uh, they were putting their football program together up the road in Morgantown when uh, Bobby Bowden was in charge of the Mountaineers, and he helped out. And uh, the, the coaches went up, and he basically opened up the film room and let them learn the Veer offense. Yeah, invited them up for three days. He gave them carte blanche to anything they wanted up there, and it just shows you the, the community spirit of, of college football. So on that day and uh, through that process, the Mountaineers and the Thunder and Herd were won. Right now, not so much. It's a great rivalry, and hope that this uh, now seven-game series can continue when it expires. Slayton over 100 yards on the day, looking for more gets close to the first down as he picked up eight. And uh, these are uh, some of the sights and sounds around this campus in Huntington, West Virginia, remembering the 75 lives lost in the plane crash November 14th, 1970. That fountain is turned off every November 14th. The silence to uh, com uh, commemorate those who uh, died on approach to the Huntington Airport here. And, uh, of course, the, uh, the We Are Marshall movie, if you haven't seen it, it's really good. It it's is. coming out on DVD a week from Tuesday. Yeah, if that one doesn't get your eyes a little moist and tug, tug at the heartstrings, then you might want to check for a heartbeat right. because that, that's, that's some serious stuff there. And uh, just a great story of uh, how this community, and especially back in 1970, you can imagine how much smaller it was yeah. that, that many years ago and how they were able to come up and gosh they even won a couple of national championships at the one double a level and they're fighting back now yeah, and there was some resistance some people thought you know what hey, well, let's gather ourselves a little bit here before we dive headlong into rebuilding the program but they, they, they stuck with it they got it done and it's been great ever since and they have been playing Tooth and nail here against mighty West Virginia. Here's the Steve Slayton touchdown run we've been expecting. Slayton finds a corner of the end zone. West Virginia scores again. 
And I said it earlier, the second half has been all about the big boys up front for West Virginia. They, they are now knocking Marshall off the ball. Look at this hole. I mean, there's, there's nobody near it. Dingle got a hand on him, but that's, that's just a foot race, and that's domination by that offensive line up front for West Virginia, moving people out of the way. And this was a West Virginia type of drive. Nine plays, 80 yards, all of them coming on the ground, culminating with an 18-yard touchdown run for Steve Slayton. Slayton now with 146 yards on the ground, 142 in the second half. It happened quick. When we come back, oh, it's the second Ray's Bentley Award, the player of the game. Ray gets to pick a look at a nice car and tell you who his guy is when we come back. Welcome back to Huntington. The second half has belonged to West Virginia. They only had six points at the half and uh, starting to stay on the ground. The dynamic duo, not so dynamic, very average in the first half, not so much in the second. Yeah, they really got it going, pounding the football, the running game here in the second half. And Pat White, he got himself a touchdown with a nice block from Slayton. Slayton busts one off the outside for his first touchdown. Here's that most recent one, taking it out to the left side. And uh, these two guys ended up with some pretty nice numbers here on the ball game. I think one of those are going to get the Bentley Award. For the player of the game? It's, yes, sir. Or ma'am, excuse me. It's quite all right, sir. <laughs> between Slayton and Pat White. Remember, Slayton at the half only had two yards on five carries. And uh, they uh, went back to the old-fashioned uh, West Virginia, just uh, put it on the ground. And they have a couple of touchdowns here in the fourth quarter. So five touchdowns in the second half for the Mountaineers, the third-ranked team in the country, which really got a scare from this Marshall football team. Darius Marshall with the kickoff return. Now it is time. No more suspense, Ray Bentley. Who gets your award this week? Well, I'm going to go with a guy that's not just a guy. He's a heck of a football player, and that is Pat White. And he kind of held things together for this football team when it was shaky. He was steady throughout the game, consistent, hit 13 of 18 for a couple of touchdown passes, ran for over 100 yards for the 10th time in his career, but he really kept his composure, and he wasn't concerned when they weren't moving the ball early on. He just kept firing away, getting it done, and for that, he gets the Bentley Award. And well-deserved, over 300 yards of offense and great composure. He really has turned into a terrific leader. Morris is back in the game and promptly fumbles the snap as we go back. He did recover it. Let's go back to Stan Barrett. All right, Pam, a couple of updates for you. Nebraska at Wake Forest. Back and forth they go at Winston-Salem. Kenneth Moore with a touchdown run. And Wake with a 17-13 lead. Also, Ohio State up 13-2 on Akron. Thank you, Stan. And on the last play here, not the fault of Morris who fumbled the snap. It was another low snap from Doug Ligurski, but he at least was able to hang on to it. Kelvin Turner up swinging out of the backfield. And Turner gets a nice game. About 11 yards up to around the 33 yard line. And back to that low snap, Pam. That's something that I saw on film that was a problem for Marshall last week, and it continues. Uh, by our count up here, we had five low snaps today. And he, they want to hit him right at the belt buckle with it because that's where the ball's going to be when he starts running his fakes and things of that nature. And that thing's been down there around the knees and even lower several times. And Morris has played a very solid game. That quarterback, as he almost had that one picked off, retreating and Richardson almost took that one the other way, and I would call that another dropped interception, which is a total of five now on the year for the Mountaineers. They need to get out there and work the judge machine and practice some catching, but there is a reason those guys play defense. Right. If they had great hands, and be on the other side yeah. of the ball. Eric Wicks uh, talked to us uh, earlier this week and said that a lot of those guys were doing just that, staying after practice and because Wicks was uh, one of those guys who couldn't hang on to an interception last week in their win over Western Michigan. So they put in some extra practice time to try to bring in those picks. That punt bounces and is down near the 45-yard line of West Virginia. Only a 22-yarder for Binswanger. 
Tonight on ABC, the final race before the chase field is locked. Three drivers ride for two spots. It all comes down to this one, the NASCAR Nextel Cup Series Chevy Rock and Roll 400 in Richmond. Coverage begins at 7 Eastern with NASCAR Countdown. For more information, log on to ESPN.com. Martin Truex Jr., Kurt Busch, and Kevin Harvick battling for that 10th and final spot for the race. And Pat White, you know, once you win the Bentley Award, you got to sit down, oh, yeah, have a cool drink, that. you're done. And indeed, Pat White is. He sits down, and Jarrett Brown, sophomore from West Palm Beach, Florida, this guy's a talented quarterback. Yeah, extremely. He's probably the best backup in the nation as Noel Devine is just going to hit it down the sideline here. So you go from speed with Slayton to super speed with Noel Devine. <laughs> Boy, things look good for the future of this uh, Mountaineer football team. Look at this. This is in real time. Look at the explosion and the acceleration that Noel Devine gives you coming out of the backfield. A little face mask at the end of that. But he, I'm telling you, the future is bright because as good as that man is right there, Noel Devine might even be better before it's all over. Look at the career rushing touchdowns in high school, 92 of them. Of course, some great college football in Florida. Ran for 6,800 yards total, 2,100 yards as a senior, with 31 touchdowns just in his senior season. And he lost both of his parents before he was a teenager. He's come from a real challenging upbringing, but he was able to fight through all those things and get himself straightened out enough to be in a major college football program. Took that one down to the 10 yard line. Devine scored on a 12 yard touchdown run earlier in this quarter. Uh, Steve Slayton and Pat White, they're uh, feeling a lot better than they were about an hour ago, I'm sure. And next up for them again, they go at Maryland. They will be playing in College Park. And that's a short week, Ray, because they, they got to play at Maryland on Thursday. That's a short turnaround. It really is, but they've done that over the years. And Coach Rodriguez has said, you know what, that's not a big deal to us. We've been there and done that. And, as long as we're healthy coming out, we should be in good shape. Maryland coming off of an inspiring win over Villanova on opening day. West Virginia will be a much tougher test. We're running again, Devine for the corner of the end zone. He's in. No signal yet. There it comes. So Noel Devine, the true freshman from Florida, has two touchdowns. Noel Devine was uh, a protege, I guess, so to speak, of Deion Sanders a little bit. Deion got involved there and tried to get him to go to Florida State, of course. And Noel said that when he came up to West Virginia for his visit, he instantly fell in love with it. And that's why he decided to go here, regardless of what anyone else wanted to do. And you see him just slide his foot into the end zone there, and the ball breaks the plane while he's still in bounds for a touchdown. Divine five carries for 76 yards. <laughs> And two touchdowns, and two of Devine's biggest fans, Pat and Steve. Yeah, and we talked to Steve Slayton about it. He says, you know, I played as a freshman, so I know what Devine and Jock Sanders, the other true freshman they have in the backfield, are going through. And he's been able to mentor those guys. And he says they've been so eager. They've been like sponges coming up in the summer and learning things, and they've been soaking it up enough to the point where they've been able to get on the field here early in their careers. Well, such a luxury to have that kind of talent waiting in the wings. One more year of eligibility for Slayton. But you know NFL scouts have to be drooling over him. Now a junior out of uh, Levittown, Pennsylvania. And these guys are getting their push-ups in now. West Virginia had only six points at the half, and now they've broken it open. Yeah, they were well rested in that first half. They only had to do six yeah, push-ups. I think I could even do six. I bet I could too. <laughs> 48, no way. 48 would be a challenge. Mm -hmm. But if you're Marshall, looking ahead for them, they host New Hampshire and then go to Cincinnati. So uh, they're doing some aggressive scheduling at Marshall. And uh, But this is, uh, I know nobody, and I'm sure coaches don't believe you. You've been a coach too, Ray. You don't believe necessarily in good losses, but they're going to come away with some good things. Yeah, they are. And, and they're going to be ready once their Conference USA schedule starts. They're going to be ready to play. And I think they're going to be very competitive in that conference this year. Darius Marshall with the return as we return to Stan Brett. All right, Pam, we told you Ohio State went up on Akron 13-2. Here's how they did it. Todd Beckman to Brandon Sane, and the Buckeyes restoring order there in Columbus 13-2 as the third quarter winds down. We got NC State and Boston College coming up. Tom O'Brien left 
Boston College to go to NC State. And he returns to Chestnut Hill now to face Jeff Jagosinski and his crew of Eagles trying to get to 2-0 in the ACC. Thank you, Stan. We're all going to look forward to that one. And again, uh, Coach O'Brien should get, because remember, when he took over that BC program, it was scandal-ridden. They had some, uh, some uh, big problems off the field, and uh, he, he did some very good things there. So hopefully he'll get a nice, warm response, and that will be an interesting game coming up in the ACC. Yeah, I think you'll hear uh, both boos and cheers. The Heisman hopefuls just in the Big East. Talk about some talent. Brian Brom, that was a 100-point game he was involved in. Ray Rice, wonderful uh, yesterday, not, and also had a, a touchdown catch, and Slayton and White have been terrific here in the second half. Yeah, outstanding talent in the Big East. Some of the highest profile and better players in the whole nation. Slate tackled inbounds, but picks up the first down. Cody Slate, number 85. You're going to hear about him for the next couple of years. And uh, Pat White on the sidelines, calling it a day after he had 125 yards on the ground and 149 yards through the air with two touchdown passes. Bernard Morris continues to take snaps for Marshall. And in the middle screen to Kelvin Turner. He'll pick up yardage up to the 45-yard line. Boogie Allen making the stop. Mark Snyder in his third year as West Virginia. It only took him 92 years to play here. He'll come back in a couple of years, but uh, what an atmosphere it has been for the battle of the Mountain State. And West Virginia, really, all they could handle in the first half. Yeah, he, Mark Snyder's going to take a lot of good things out of this game with his football team. The way they came out, they had that lead at halftime. They did a lot of good things early. It, ultimately, they just got basically overrun on defense in the second half. And that, that's something that when you don't have the depth and you're trying to get things going and building up a program, that'll happen to you when you take on the big boys sometimes. For Rich Rodriguez going in at halftime with his team down 13 to 6. Kept the ball on the ground a lot. And uh, Steve Slayton over 100 yards on the ground just in the second half. Darius Marshall, true freshman. Another bright light for this program. Picks up the first down. And the fans, many of them still remaining, especially the Mountaineer fans, stand and cheer. Several of the Marshall fans also cheering. It's been a long time coming, almost a century before the Mountaineers came into Marshall. And after getting a skill like this, you kind of know why they didn't want to play him. Marshall, a great program. They played him tough, took the lead at the half, but fall 48-23. Coming up next, need more ESPN2 college football, including the scoreboard show presented by Accurate, Ray Bentley and Rob Simmel. Here, I'm Pam Ward. As we say so long from Huntington, this has been a presentation of ESPN, the worldwide leader in sports.